Hello, welcome to uh, all of you watching in the future and then everyone also watching here. Hello, hi, how's it going guys? Hi! Uh, welcome to Act 3 of the Twilight Protocol uh, event series. Yay. Which Yay. is happening, yeah. Woo. It's happening right now. In Tombstone, Arizona. Uh, today on the anniversary of the shootout at the OK Corral, which is super cool. Uh, yeah. We had a Doomtown tournament e uh, earlier. There's been an awesome turnout for a bunch of players. It was fun. Uh, myself and Jordan Pridgen played in it. Uh, me very briefly. I was in, I was pretty immediately trounced, uh, but I had a good time. Um, this I, I got to play against him, so that's they true. did. He trounced me. Jordan won. Yeah, that's very true. Um, so I, first of all, we just want to say a big thanks to uh, everyone from Pine Box Entertainment and from Pinnacle, uh, especially to David Lapp, to Jody Black, and to Shane Hensley for helping us organize this whole event. We did part one earlier this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, let's yeah, hear it yeah, for him. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us out here and letting us be a part of the Doomtown fiction. And for those of you who are Doomtown players, you probably already know all about the awesome fiction that comes along with the game. It's part of the thing that just makes it feel so much like the Weird West when you play it. For those of you who don't know Doomtown, you should check out the card game because it's fantastic. And also, if you know Deadlands and you enjoy playing that, you should check out the fiction that they have on the, uh, the Gamora Gazette, the Pine Box Dispatch, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's, it's really good stuff that you can bring into your games at home as well. Um, we also want to thank the city of Tombstone <laughs> for hosting yeah. us and letting us post up in the American Legion here and just uh, have this whole space to game and hang out with everybody today. It's been awesome. So thank you, Tombstone. Thank you. Thank yes, you. thank you. Yeah, this is here for Tombstone. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, my name is Jordan Caves Callerman. I am the, the Marshal, now the Dean of Wild Cards on Saving Throw. We ran a Deadlands Reloaded campaign. We're in the middle of an East Texas University campaign. Uh, we run that show live on Friday nights at twitch.tv slash saving throw show at 8 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, I typically am the person sitting behind the screen on that, on that show. And we have almost all of the wild cards here. Uh, Garab couldn't make it, but it's okay because we were joined by a fantastic guest. Before we get to that, let's, let's meet everyone really quickly and we'll start with our fantastic guest right here. Let them know what your name is and just the name of the character you're playing. My name is Christine Lapp. Yay, Yay! Christine Lapp! <laughs> I am playing Willa May McGowan. Everyone's favorite orphanage keeper turned uh, Texas Ranger ally who's always re ready and willing to put herself in the line of fire for anyone that she is loyal to. <laughs> Yes. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, and we'll, we'll continue down the table there. Hey, uh, my name's Dom Zook, and I am playing uh, Professor Duncan. The air quotes are important. They are important, yes. yeah. <laughs> Professor Duncan, uh, originally an unaffiliated member of uh, uh, just kind of floating around Gamora, but now we'll, we'll get to in a little bit, but he has been affiliated uh, with a faction in Doomtown thanks to the votes from the players of the game, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about in a little bit, but let's jump over here to my left. Hi, I'm Megan Caves, and I'm playing Valeria Batten. Valeria Batten, from, mm -hmm. uh, previously from the Fourth Ring still. You know, maybe yeah. a little bit uh, morally, ethically I shaky, mean, but uh, you she's know. like a scientist, kind of. Yeah. When the chips were down, she was on the right side. Speaking of the right <laughs> side, Hi, last everybody. but not least. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pritchett, and I'm playing Abram Grove, who is the uh, sheriff of Gamora. Was. Was. Left, yeah. left in order to pursue some uh, important business that we might get to in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a sword. He does have a sword. <laughs> As you can sword. see. He's a sheriff with a sword. <laughs> also a gun. It's and like a gun exclusive apparently. thing. Yeah. But. That's true. Uh, so before we get into everything that we're doing tonight, this is Act 3. This is the finale of the Twilight Protocol series. We should start off uh, by recapping what has come before this. So uh, if you have not seen these previous videos, they are up on our YouTube channel. You can find them and watch through them to get, you know, everything in detail. But really quickly, uh, our story began with a different posse, a very different posse. Uh, we had Elijah Clay, a uh, Texas Ranger. Byron Decker, uh, an agent. Valeria Batten was also there. And uh, we, we did have Professor Duncan with us from the get-go. That was at Genghis Khan in Denver. And uh, the, the action began just outside of Tombstone. We've come full circle at the Office of Ancestral Affairs. The Twilight Protocol had been put in effect due to the, uh, the growing darkness and the machinations of forces unknown out in the Weird West. And Black Elk and Laughing Crow had called together this group 
to send them on a very important mission, to have them put their differences aside, north versus south, fourth ring versus all the people who are sane and good, <laughs> and go off in search of Mason Adler, the new ringleader of the fourth ring, and also Abram Groth, who had left on a, a very secretive mission to find ways to take down the fourth ring once and for all. The group was sent to Denver. That was Abram's last known location. And once they got there, they were able to find the secret headquarters of the agency. However, something seemed strange. The whole place was abandoned and desolate, and the giant door that opened up to the underground facility was locked up tight and could not be opened. However, they were able to find a workaround for that and realized why the door was not supposed to be opened. Looks like a quarantine procedure had been put in effect because there was no one living behind that door. Instead, just a ravenous horde of nose ferrets. Nose ferrets. Nose ferratu to those of you who uh, don't frequent the Weird West. Uh, <laughs> that leapt out in overwhelming force to attack our posse. However, at the very end, the lift had been activated. Reinforcements were coming. Who was coming? We didn't know. The players of Doomtown had to vote and decide which faction was coming to rescue the posse. And the result was the first people. The first people came down, along with a few other Ooh. allies, to join <laughs> the fight against the Nosferatu and save the lives of the posse members there. That was where we concluded at Genghis Khan. Then, part two, Chupacabra Khan in Austin, headquarters of the Texas Rangers. There, the posse was somewhat different. Elijah Clay was still present, Valeria Batten. But Professor Duncan left with Black Elk and the other First Peoples. Uh, it was voted that he would become an official member of the First Peoples, so you all can look forward to an experienced version of Professor Duncan, uh, per, you know, now officially affiliated with the First Peoples in an upcoming Doomtown set. Um, taking his place was John Aces Radcliffe, an ex-agent who had accidentally erased his own memories and was trying to figure out what it meant to be an agent again. And they met up with Padre Ernesto de Diaz, uh, played by, by this gentleman here, who's no longer playing Padre Ernesto de Diaz. <laughs> they left the agency's headquarters after finding a note left by Andrew Lane, the ghost himself, letting them know that they were needed next and in Texas, and they should seek out the house of many faiths, many faiths and the rangers there. Um, along the way, along the way, they had to escape from hanging judges, uh, not just one, not just two, but three of them uh, in a very narrow escape. They made it all the way to the house of many faiths, but something seemed wrong. It was abandoned. There was just one nun left in charge of it, and there were details in the house that seemed uh, off somehow. Turned out that nun was none other than A.V. Klein, a huckster affiliated with the fourth ring, playing a little trick on the posse and led them right into a werewolf ambush, but not before taunting them, saying that dark things were headed for Tombstone and she was heading there as well. They were able to escape from the werewolves and on their way back to civilization, they saw in the distance a strange, gaunt, pale figure with a very unpleasant laugh who seemed to be waiting for them atop a mesa. And after, after uh, yeah, uh, someone, it looks like we have a, yeah. a someone very much like that in the audience right now. I'm sure, um, I'm sure it's just coincidental resemblance. Um, <laughs> you seem kind enough. Camera whip pan. Oh, it won't do it. Oh, the camera won't pan. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> um, before letting them know that big changes were coming, he summoned up a whole force of monstrous gloms made up of the corpses of our posses, dead friends and loved ones, just to show you the depths that he went to in order to torture you psychologically. Uh, it was an overwhelming force for our posse, but once again, there was a vote to be made by the Doomtown players. Once again, there was cavalry just over the horizon, and that cavalry was the Law Dogs. Mm. And that is where we will pick up tonight. But before we do, it's time to draw some fate chips. Woo! Woo! Yeah! So who wants to go first? Uh, I will. Oh. All right, Professor. Draw oh, three yeah, fate sir. chips unless you have any ads or hints. I do. I have great luck plus two fate chips. All right, well then you draw four altogether. 
Can I have one of your fate chips? <laughs> Maybe I have common bond as Ooh. well. Ooh. No spoilers. <laughs> What'd you get? Four red. Four red. <laughs> Whoa. All right, reds are powerful, but they come with the uh, added negative benefit or negative side effect of uh, giving me some more resources. Benefit for you. Benefit, it's a benefit, yeah, for, benefit me. for you. <laughs> I get, a, May. I get one less. You get one oh. less because of your bad luck. Oh! Mm -hmm. What's that if about? we're sitting next to each other, we balance it out. <laughs> Two blues, though. Oh. oh! The best of the bunch. Oh. You can use those for a bonus with no detrimental effect. No bonus for me, unfortunately. Valeria. I only get two as well. I also have, oh, have no, I have dreams. bad dreams. Yeah. yeah so it's a death difference. Oh, I got a white and a red. A white and a red. All right, and then last but not least. Got a normal level of luck, so I'm drawing three. Abram Grove, <laughs> a normally lucky person. This is so normal. I mean, is he though? Two whites and a blue. Two whites and oh. a blue. All right, that means I'm gonna get one for each of you. Four for me. I think you should get one less because That's we both That's three get whites one so far. Let me draw the last one here. Four whites. Wow. Four whites all together. That's unlike you. It is. Uh, there is a legend chip in here. <gasps> what? Whoa. I'll just throw that out there. You tell us that now? Yeah. Well, you didn't draw it, so I can I tell you now. I moved around more. He was clearly not telling you, Megan. So <laughs> clearly. <laughs> jerk, what a jerk. All right. Fate chips are drawn. Scene is set. Let's saddle up. Oh. All of you stand outside in the desert on a mesa. Giant creatures, a, a horde of them. Huge amalgamations of dead corpses. Faces of people you know and have lost and loved screaming out as they move across the rippling mass of these abominations, all while the tall, gaunt figure on top of the mesa just laughs and watches before calling out, I do wish I could stay and see how this turns out, but uh, there is important work to be done. <laughs> and as he turns, he rips a hole in the sky with his fingers, rending the fabric of reality, revealing Deep blackness filled with sparkling stars, and with a smile and a bow, steps through it as the sky heals itself over, and these creatures come lumbering towards you. But off in the distance, the pounding of hooves, the shouts of maybe allies, maybe enemies, you look over the rise and see a force of mounted men and women riding to your aid, led by none other than Abram Groth, the very man you have all been searching for this entire time, at the front, leading the charge, his sword Evanor held aloft, shining brightly in his hands. It looks like he maybe did pick up that holy warrior edge after all at some point in the intervening time. With him, a force of other people as well, among them Black Elk and Professor Duncan, now officially inducted to the First Peoples. Uh, the orphanage keeper, Willem A. McGowan, now an ally of the Texas Rangers, carrying some sort of strange-looking weird science device, <laughs> and others as well. As you all ride up, Clint Ramsey, who had been with the posse before, catches sight of Abram Groth riding to your aid. Sheriff. Clint. Listen, we ain't got a lot of time. It doesn't seem like you do. I didn't think I was ever going to see you again. Well, the Lord had other plans. All right, yeah, 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 you got that to say. Uh, <laughs> listen, listen, this don't seem like a fight that many of us are gonna walk away from. And you got important work to do yet. Then, Avi Klein mentioned something about Tombstone, and this cackling fellow up there seemed to have machinations at work. I think that you're needed elsewhere. You take whoever it is you need, and you get out of here. The rest of us will stay here and join this fight up. Well, if Valeria can join the Sad of Good here, I reckon I might as well join up with the law dogs after all. Also, I got a hankering that uh, some people voted that that might be a faction that I could uh, be a member of, and it just seems right in the moment, so I'm willing to lay down a trail of suppressive fire along with the rest of my friends here to get you and yours out of here. Well, I'm glad you decided to finally walk the good path of the law for real, but... It comes with a condition, growth. You see, a, you see Avi Klein, you send her my regards. And what? I mean that in a lethal fashion. I'll be sure to help with that. God's mercy only goes so far when it comes to those creatures. All right, boys, let's light them up. Yow! And Clint Ramsey runs into the fight along with the rest of the posse. Now, 
All of you are here. All of you see the monstrous forces assembled against the group. You can choose to run or to stay and help the efforts of your allies before you flee. Hmm. We're going to run this as a quick encounter. So this is the scene. The Gloms are heading right for the assembled forces. You can help however you deem necessary or prudent, or you can say the better part of valor is getting out of here to live and fight another day. So, what say you, posse members? Before Clint runs off, can I touch him and say, go fast and uh, cast quickness? Yeah, absolutely. You want to use your action to cast click quickness to help yes. Clint Ramsey take things down. Yes, I do. All right, give us your arcane skill roll, Valeria. Will do. Let me make sure I got the right die. I do. Okay, not so good. That is a three and a two. That That's not going to do it. Uh, I'm going to re-roll it. You're going to spend your white fate chip yeah. to re-roll. Yes, I am. Good luck to you. I aced it on Ooh. my 10. Aced it. Nice. Yeah, so 12. 12. OK, so you turn to Clint Ramsey and put a hand on him and say what again? I say, uh, go fast. That's what I said. And as you do, <laughs> there is a flash from your eyes that just traces lightning quick almost quicker than the eye can follow it, down your arm, out your hand, and into Clint Ramsey's body. And he stiffens as though suddenly just pulsing with electricity. Go fast, yeah, I think I can do that, Miss Valeria. Thank you very much for the aid you assembled. All right, guys, let's get him. Yeah! <laughs> and he runs off. Now, you succeeded with the raise. I did. So you are going to escape from this dangerous encounter with no ill effects, Ooh, Valeria. Okay. Also, I have one other thing that I would like to point out. If at any point any of you in the audience feel that something that is done by one of the posse members up here is worthy of a fate chip, feel free to call that out. I will take your, uh, your suggestions because uh, I'm not used to handing them out on my stream. We don't do that. Boo. I know, boo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Valeria, you have assisted uh, the the forces there, and then you're going to sort of fade into the background and let the uh, let them do the dirty work. I, I have more important things I have to get to. Absolutely. That's all I can do. All right. Who else wants to help hinder or flee? And you probably shouldn't want to hinder. I mean, unless all of a sudden you've got like a secret agenda that I'm not aware of. Actually. <laughs> Professor. <laughs> uh, I will help. Uh, uh, I will do something similar uh, before he, before Clint leaves. Okay. Or Let whoever. me get the eye patch if, back if out. Someone, if there's someone close, close nope, by, just it's Clint close Ramsey. Only Clint. He's about to run past me, and I'm like, wait, Clint Ramsey. <laughs> yeah, what is it? I don't think I know you. Have we met before? No, but uh, allow me to help you. And he'll touch his gun, and he'll cast <laughs> Smite on his gun. Oh. Okay. All right, so uh, you're going to use your limited access to the spirits that yes. you are working with Black Elk to develop. Yeah. And, and you try just, and call down a favor. He's just, I hope this works. And uh, do I use tribal medicine as You do. Great. Give me a tribal medicine roll. On the table. <laughs> a three and a three. Well, Not a success for tribal medicine, no. professor. No, but you know what? Here, have a fate chip. Are you gonna spend this to add a d6 to your roll so that I get another fate chip, or are you just gonna re-roll? I'm just gonna re-roll. Fine. Ha! <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> wow, okay. Three and a three That's again. A three and a three, yep. I don't know, it seems like you need, might need to add a d6 to it. Yeah. Just for safety. This is, uh, this is pretty typical Professor Duncan. <laughs> Professor <laughs> Duncan. Okay, here, have a d, have a, Thing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so you're going to add a d6 to it? Yeah. All right, I'm just going to draw one of these fate chips for myself then. Oh, I got a white. That's okay. okay. Hey, I aced it. Yay! More aces. And, and then another three. Okay, so that's a total of 912. Okay, yeah, I'll call that a success with a raise. Great. So you reach out and grab his gun. And just as he, well, actually, he's been quickened. So in the middle of him going, hey, fella, I don't let everybody touch my gun, <laughs> right? especially when I'm about to run and out of a fight. And it's done. It starts to glow. And then the barrel of it just sort of glows softly with the light as each one of the rounds in the six chambers have been smitten, <laughs> smitten. by your shamanic powers. Yes, and they have a plus four now because I got a raise on that. Oh boy, I'm feeling suddenly keyed up and ready to go. Yeah. Let's do this, boys. I, I hope you live. Bye. <laughs> Uh, you also escape this dangerous encounter with no ill effects. 
Professor Duncan, and Clint Ramsey is just ready to just wreck some stuff at clearly, this point. Clearly. Uh, who else would like to do something in this encounter? How far are those guys away? The Gloms? Mm -hmm. uh, they're getting closer by the second. Range of fire is one. Oh, uh, your range of fire with the sonic defraculator is actually uh, just a cone. So you can, you can wait for them to come thundering up and then just unload on it if you want. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Have you ever dealt with a ton of uh, orphans? Before that are, you know, are on you a asking, candy rush Are you asking Halloween Clint Ramsey? By myself? <laughs> or are you pretty asking sure me? That, uh, pretty sure I got this. <laughs> Let's do this. All right. I'm going to say for the sake of not having to put the eye patch on that you are not asking Clint Ramsey. <laughs> no. So, I got this. hefting your weird sonic defraculator with copper wires and tubing and strange lights racing across the surface of it, off of the sling around your shoulder, you level it at one of the gloms mm -hmm. coming in. Give us a shooting roll for it. And are you going to spend two shots or four shots to really up that damage? I'm going to do four shots. Four shots. Yeah. All right. The ghost rock inside the chamber screams as you pull upon its power. Give us a shooting roll. Oh, wait. That's, is that your damage roll? Wait, yes. First, we want to shoot it. Where is it? Shooting, you got that's a what D8 I was asking. in. Yes, sorry. Okay. D8 with your I'm wild in. die. But that's a really good damage My roll. Body. Set that to the side. <laughs> Keep that. I'm sorry, it's been a very long day with a lot of beer. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> Christine's been running events all day. <laughs> Willa Mae McGowan's been watching the kids. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of kids, a lot of alcohol needed. <laughs> all right, so you rolled a seven, yeah. which is plenty of success to hit that glom with your sonic defraculator. I will let you know, though. Okay. Without a raise, you are going to get a little bit roughed up in this encounter. So you can reroll, or use one of your blue fate chips to add a d6, or you can just let the chips fall as they may. I'll add one. All right, you're going to add a d6? Oh, yep, there you go. Just roll an extra d6 and add that to your seven. Ten. Ten. Success with a raise. As Yay. it comes thundering towards you, you light up the sonic defraculator and a giant pulse of sonic waves just shoot out from it, striking the thing right in the middle of its weird grotesque mass and shredding some of the rotten flesh off the middle of it, revealing a hole straight through to the other side with screaming hands and faces inside of it as well. Not exactly what you were hoping for, but you did manage to slow it down, if not make it slightly more terrifying. <laughs> uh, Willa May, now might be a good time to uh, let the rest of these folks handle this while you beat feet. I'm gonna go. All right. <laughs> Willa May has done what she can here, but there are orphans to save in the future. <laughs> She's got to make sure she makes it out of here alive. You will also take no ill effects, Willa May, which leaves... A Avery will call out. He's like, uh, Mrs. McGowan, Valeria, start going. We need to get away from this. Clint is buying us time. And then he'll turn around and just kind of go, we can, I'm sure I can take a few of them out, though. And just uh, turn and charge his horse towards them and just try and sweep over one of them with uh, Evanor. Okay, all right, so previous Sheriff Abram Groth, you were going to ride boldly into battle and try and take out not one, but two of the Gloms? Just yeah, striking let's try it. however you can to buy your friend's time. Okay, that sounds very bold. I'll so take I'm one going. Out and God will take the other out. <laughs> there we go. For that and for your boldness, I will award you a fate chip. Yay! <laughs> but I will also levy. Oh, yeah! <laughs> It's a That's popular for move. <laughs> <laughs> but I will also levy a minus two against this roll, because this is going to be fairly difficult. Quite fair. Give me fighting. Okay. From the back of your steed. Oh, right. So that's a four, but it's a minus, minus two. two. Correct. That yeah. doesn't quite work. I'm going to... I'm going to add a d6 with my blue fate chip. All right. Don't forget, you also have fate's favor, so I know, at one so point you can use so anything as a blue. one of these white fate chips gets to be a blue fate chip in the future. Yes! <laughs> That's what you want. All right. Saving throw. Die! Haste it again. These dice are loaded. <laughs> They're so good. <laughs> okay, so that is a 19 total. Okay, so you went from a 4 to a 19. Yeah. Just a little bit. So just like you would expect him to, Abram Groth goes riding into battle, shining sword Evanor held aloft, 
and slashes and slices at any one of the gloms that he can get the attention of, riding his horse around in circles and trying as much as he can to get them to focus on him while your allies have a chance to escape before finally being able to turn tail and ride after them, leaving a highly caffeinated and very empowered Clint Ramsey <laughs> to lead the charge here and carry the fight against the rest of the gloms, hopefully to take them out and survive to fight another day. But you don't know that now, because the four of you ride off, joined by uh, one or two other figures. Professor, Black Elk is with you. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He is here as your mentor yeah. and guide. Um, he's been working with you, but you've been working with him, trying to get his, him to pull himself out of the hunting ground from time to time so that he isn't always speaking in riddles and maybe can even help you learn about what it is he wants you to do. Mm, being helpful. And a mysterious man in gray faded confederate wear is with you as well. Uh, he has a, a neatly trimmed goatee and a saber at his hip, but he is, uh, has a haunted air about him. He's got an important feel to him as well. Well, I know who he is, right? You do, but the rest of the people here don't, and neither do they. Mm -hmm. Not yet. <laughs> but you do manage to escape. None of you take any wounds in the battle, uh, which is a good thing, because the ride is hard, and the night is falling, and eventually you do have to dismount and make camp. And as you do, you finally have a chance to take stock of the situation. Now, do all of you know each other? Now, Willem May, as a, res a longtime resident of Gamora, you, of course, are familiar with, uh, with Abram Groth. Once a deputy, <laughs> then a sheriff, now a wandering hero with a magical sword. It's man of It's uh, always good to see you, oh, Mrs. Yes. McGowan. Miss McGowan, I, sorry, I, I... Didn't you fail my English class? <laughs> <laughs> Ms. McGowan's been around for a real long time. <laughs> uh, and of course, you know Valeria, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, Professor Duncan, you journeyed with Valeria earlier. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know the orphanage keeper or um, uh, how familiar you are with uh, Gamora's uh, previous town sheriff. Mm -mm. Uh, Ma'am, it's very nice to meet you. Sir, I like your bladed weapon. Uh, yes, its name is Evanor. Duncan. It, yes, sorry, Black Elk, yes. It is very important in your work to maintain an air of mystery. Like the shadows that ripple beneath the surface of a creek, you contain hidden depths. Right, Sh creek shadows. Got it. You contain hidden depths, Professor. Yep, you. Just, just like a shadow in a creek. Mm. You oh, sorry, is this a is this a point where I should be more literal? Maybe. Oh. Just for me, just for just for my sake. Just try and not give it all away so quickly. Right, okay, yep. Hold yep. some back. Sure, okay. Got it. It's part of the mystique. Yep. <laughs> yep. And then Black Elk settles back against a rock and lowers his blindfold, returning to the hunting ground. Thank you. Uh Nice to meet you all. Uh, Valeria, nice to see you again. Professor, I see that you have continued your journey with the Black Elk here. Yes. <clears throat> yep. Yes. I, uh... <laughs> it's, uh, it's going... I mean, that seemed to be about the same as before, so... Yeah, but I've learned a lot since then. I mean, I mean, I've learned a little. I've learned, I've learned some. I've, I've learned a bit. So you are, are a professor now, then. Professor. Okay. That's fine. Uh, well, the if path to self improvement takes many steps. So, a good job that you're trying to better yourself, at least. Very much mm -hmm. so. As I keep telling him, if you do not learn to master your curiosity, your curiosity will become your master. Please continue. Quite wise. Then Black Elk settles against a rock and returns his consciousness to the hunting grounds. <laughs> Anyways, nice to be here. Well, you say that now, but 
I don't think this trip is, is going to be an easy one. Well, no, but it's, it's important. I mean, the, the only reason why I and Black Elk are here are because a, a, everything is being affected by this thing. I, 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 I'm happy to help. Well, we'll take all the help we can get. And then, of course, Valeria and Abram, you have a little bit of a past as well, working together to take down Ivor Hawley back in Gamora, mm. what seems like forever ago. I, th I think there's a certain kinship in having gone through that battle that it would be hard to explain to people who weren't there. I would agree with that. It's nice to have someone I can trust. No offense. The rest I've been with didn't seem to like me very much, so it's nice to have you here. Well, we don't always choose the people who are we are going to be allied with. A higher power chooses that, but I'm glad that we're all back together again. Me as well. Are uh, you planning on introducing me to your friends here, Growth, or am I to remain here in shadow? Well, as uh, Black Elk said, I thought that we shouldn't give everything away immediately. Oh, well, I would be interested in who you are. Uh, what's his first name again? Austin. Austin. Austin Stoker. The man here is Austin Stoker, the man I left trying to find. Pleasure. I'm sure, uh, my reputation precedes me. It does not. You, are you also... Well, are, that uh, is a disappointment. Are you also a, a creek shadow? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry? He mentioned you were shadows. Creek, creek shadow, because I'm kind of a creek shadow too. So maybe if you're also a creek shadow, you don't, like, maybe you don't also tell people what, because the water's flowing a lot over the... the, the, the I'm going to stop you there, sir. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I, 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 I see that you are. And uh, perhaps it is fair to say that I am a bit of a creek shadow myself. Ah, mm. Knew it. <laughs> but it seems, despite uh, what our wise native friend uh, is saying, that perhaps now is not the time to play our cards close to our chest. It seems there are dark times falling upon the land, and now perhaps is the time to come clean. Go on. Mr. Growth kindly sought me out, as he knew of my connection to the Gamora before. Uh, I've been around uh, a few times in my day, and uh, I'm well acquainted with the dark secrets in the history of Gamora. Oh, secrets you might want to share? Ordinarily, no. But now it seems like a, a prudent time to. Growth, I have to thank you, though, first for uh, seeking me out. Of course. It was... I think the Lord we can all thank for leading me to your path. I'm sorry, I, I know I go to that well often, it just weighs on my mind. Yeah, I've picked up on that. No, uh, I perhaps think that uh, maybe it was something more nefarious than the, the Lord's intervention that sent you my way, but I'm grateful for it all the same. Wandering as I was in the desert, uh, had lost a bit of my faculties, escaping from the Nosferatu infestation in Denver. Oh. Seems the agency bit off more than it could chew with this specimen they were experimenting on. Uh, Valeria wants to go over and smell him. You want to smell him? Mm -hmm. What are you sniffing for? See how dead he may or may not be. Oh, okay. Uh, give me a notice roll, Valeria. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a four. A four? Uh, so, are you doing this uh, obviously, or are you trying to do it subtly? She's not trying to hide it. <laughs> All right, so as he's in the middle of beginning to tell where it was that he was found, you just walk up to him and <laughs> stick your face up. Can I help you? Uh, no! I, I apologize, Mr. Stoker. Valeria is um, a bit of an odd bird sometimes. Odd well, bird? I take offense to that, Abram. Aren't we all? He says, levying a gaze at Professor Duncan. <laughs> um, you get a few cents off of him. You get uh, you know, trail dust, uh, the unmistakable odor of uh, a man who has not showered in quite some time. Mm. Um, no 
scent necessarily of the dead, but something else. There's a strange, unfamiliar, musky odor to him that is deeply unpleasant in a way that just sets your teeth on edge. Is that something riding up there with you? Oh, not exactly, no. But see, that's uh, part of my story that's important to tell. Mm. You see, I was in Gamora before. I, I, I saw the darkness rise in there, but that darkness had a name, mm -hmm. Nick Nevin. Now, maybe that isn't a name familiar to any of you, but this is a uh, powerful, dark entity, uh, not quite a reckoner himself, but strong enough to have the ambition and the drive to want to rule. And it seems the patch of earth that he had designs on was our dear Gamora. Mm -hmm. I found this out the hard way when myself and a force of men became accidentally stranded in the place between places, the hunting grounds, I believe your tribe calls it. I'm sorry, uh, you don't look like any native I've met. Oh. Silence. I don't need hand wave. You don't need to know about that. Yeah, I'm part of the tribe. Creek shadows. Yep. <laughs> Fair enough. On the other side of this tear in reality, we encountered this thing. He tore my men apart, was in the process of massacring all of them when I thought to strike a deal. Keep me and let my men go free. Which he did, mm. let them go free to their slaughter on the other side of that tear as he sought to possess me, to push his consciousness into my own and walk freely upon the grounds of Gamora. I fought him as much as I could, but he was too strong. And just before he squashed all that was of me inside of my head, I threw myself back through the tear. I must have severed our connection, but in doing so, I lost some bit of myself that remains with the creature, and I gained some bit of him. My soul remains in Nick Nevin's care, and I have sought long these many years to take it back. But I gained some of his darkness as well, and I have put it to good use over the years. So it's nothing we should be worried about? Ordinarily, no. But with this rise in darkness, these figures on the horizon, casting a shadow over the land, that darkness inside me has risen to respond, and I must confess, I lost myself for a time. That's where the uh, agents found me and threw me in that hole, which I was lucky to escape from, wandering like a madman in the wastes, before Mr. Growth was kind enough to seek me out. And then I had a sudden inclination, a place we needed to be, to find, I suppose, this group that we are in now. Gamora has always been a hotbed of darkness, but something has changed. Something is different. And I feel that us, or some of us at least, might live to see what that change is. Well, anyways, that's my story. You have now seen to the bottom of my creek, Professor. <laughs> More proof that there are never deals to be made with creatures of darkness. They'll always come back and break their word and ruin it. Now the Lord gives his help freely, if you're willing to accept it. Unless you're smart enough to take that power. Well, where do you think that the vision that he got came from? Where do you think my power comes from? Well, we can talk about that on another day. I have actually been meaning to talk about that. Well, on that note, uh, Mr. Growth, you dropped references to new trouble brewing in Gomorrah, something about a uh, unpleasant circus of sorts. Well, the fifth ring has been 
is something of an issue. Oh, the fourth ring. Sorry. <laughs> There's the fourth, only four. Let's yeah. not overestimate the forces of darkness. <laughs> ah, the fourth ring has been a plague on Gamora for longer than I'd like to admit. And they are uh, still operating within the town. Well, we've done what we can to drive them out. Oh, so you defeated them, you destroyed them. No, they're not that easy to destroy. Well, then you did not win a great victory as you uh, hinted at? Well, we drove many of them away. Uh, what, what exactly di did we recently do in Gamora? Most we, importantly, we you defeated Ivor, Ivor Hawley. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I knew that. I wasn't sure if we And were stopped talking. the spread of the plague that he was using to sow darkness uh, across the town of Gamora. Ivor, the former ringleader of the Fourth Ring, we managed to band together and take him down. Of course, the vermin that he kept together, now well, they're still around, scurrying under the floorboards and into the dark places. But we've done what we can to try and exterminate those that are still Former alive. Former ringleader. So there's a new one. Yes. What do we know? What do we know about him? We know Mason. from what Valyria has revealed before. Mason Adler is the new ringleader of the Fourth Ring, a, uh, a very powerful werewolf with uh, many mysterious uh, just things about him. Not much is known about him, except that he has taken leadership of the Fourth Ring and seems to be working in tandem with the dark forces gathering in the West. I assume you relay that. I to do. You. And as you're in the middle of that, you hear uh, a pleasant cough from the darkness out uh, in your camp. <clears throat> Telegram. Here? Uh, Telegram for uh, Mr. Growth. I'm sorry, did someone give you an address or something? And a, a, a young boy walks into the, into the firelight, uh, dressed uh, a little bit, you know, dust covered, a little bit sweaty from the trail, but looking very prim and proper in his, uh, in his outfit. Uh, Mr. Groth? It's oh, over here. Yeah. This is the uh, sword. I have a telegram from uh, one Lacey O'Malley. All right. Now, Lacey O'Malley is a name that all of you know. Uh, one of the premier reporters for the Tombstone Epitaph. Uh, and a, a, a raker of muck. Mm. But the best kind of muck. <laughs> I'm sorry, how is it you even found me here? Oh, uh, Mr. O'Malley told me that I would find you here at this time with uh, a, a, a group of uh, associates. Well, uh, I I'm would concerned. be very happy to know how Mr. O'Malley knew that was going to happen, but uh, for now, I guess just give me his message. Of course. I have um, had to travel pretty far. All right. I take out uh, a couple uh, dollars or uh, hand them over. <laughs> In <Wow>. the dark. <laughs> wow. How very generous of you, sir. Thank you very much. Greed is unbecoming. Yep. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Your telegram. Thank Good night you. to you. That's real silver. Is it? You want to? I'll have to bite it later and make sure. All right. <laughs> have a nice night. And with that, the young boy turns and walks back out into the darkness. Wow. That was very weird. That was very strange. Uh, what does this message say? It's Greetings, Abram Grove and Company. <laughs> Stop. A lot of fires, but Twilight Legion is putting them all out. Stop. You're needed in Tombstone. Stop. Get there yesterday, all capitals. Stop. Your native friends know the way. Stop. So, Black Elf? Cannot literally get there Lead yesterday. Us. <laughs> yep. uh, so you turn to Black Elk, who has just been sitting motionless back against this rock the whole time. Uh, Black Elk perks up as you say his name. Hmm? <laughs> this telegram from that very precocious young boy, uh, seems to say that you're going to know how to get us the tombstone. Oh. Duncan? Yes. <laughs> oh, please tell me. So one of you knows how to get there. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh, now is not the time for creek shadows, Duncan. <laughs> right. Yes. I know exactly how we can get there. Yes. Yesterday. His training has been 
coming along quite well. You've said that multiple times. I have. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> well, either way. Duncan. Yep. 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 You, of course, Black Elk, I know exactly what to do. Very well. Then begin. Oh, oh, it's, um, just give me the first bit uh, of this. I've got the rest of it. Do you want to just, like, try and find a town and ask around or something? No, no. no. He has to do this on his own. I've got it. Well, I'm pretty sure it's west of here. Yep, that's, that's where we start. Oh, Black Elk. Wow. When we find ourselves wandering in the wilderness, to whom do we turn, Duncan? Do we turn to our friends? Mm -hmm. Do we turn to ourselves? Or do we turn to the very land itself? The land? Yep. And if we turn to the land? We find the way to go. Correct. <laughs> First try. <laughs> It's wonderful that you all have figured that out, but you still have not told us which way to go and how to yep. actually get to Tombstone. Right. Correct. <laughs> You're right. I am turning to the land now. Duncan, begin. Turning to land. And go land. So what are you doing, Duncan? <laughs> Duncan's, Duncan's going to take a moment. He's going to, he's going to sit uh, on the ground, and he's going to put his hands into the dirt. Okay. And he's going to really focus hard and look around and just hope to God that something comes to him right now. Caretaker of children, <clears throat> tell me, what is Duncan doing? Um, I think, I think he's struggling. I don't know if he's in pain. Mm -hmm. Um. He's looking around. Uh, yeah. Uh, tell me, does everyone else seem to be growing frustrated? Yes. Good. This is the way. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? That does not give us a direction to How go about in. about this? These things cannot be rushed. Well, just we are in a bit of a hurry. around in a circle a few times. Stop, and then just go that way. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do that. So at it. the advice of Willa May, you spin around in a circle a few times, <laughs> you stop, and then do what? Just, just go that way. That way? Just go that way. I'm, what, I'm, yeah, that's uh, kind of what it was telling me. <coughs> Intuition, <coughs> you spin, you Duncan, stop. Duncan, Duncan. Yeah. <coughs> that's maybe, maybe a degree off or two, kind of, I'm going to keep just moving and you just <sighs> hop when I get close. Duncan. When no. we speak with the land, mm -hmm. with right. whom are we actually speaking? Not the land. With no, not not the land. Yep. The land. The who, who <laughs> lives <laughs> within the land? You. You know this. Me, me, me. No, no, no it's not the, you. The, the land. The spirits of the land. The spirits okay. of the land. Yes. yes. No, I was testing you on that one. Ah. <laughs> So the student has become the teacher. I mean, I am Professor Duncan. <laughs> so of course, Duncan was merely fooling. He has already communed with the spirits and has found the location we seek. Yes, that is all over his face. <laughs> I'm going to have to trust you on that. Don't. It's... Listen, we, we need to get there quickly. And if you do know a way, we need to do it? Duncan, use your skills. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I will try to do a tribal medicine and commune with the, the spirit of the earth. Give me tribal medicine, Duncan. Great. That's a four. I'm also going to hand out a couple fate chips. Oh! Hey. One for suggesting that he spin in a circle and point in whichever direction. A blue one. One for playing along when you clearly had no idea what you were supposed to do. A white one. One for keeping everyone brutally honest. I got one, I'm good. 
Ooh, oh yeah, don't worry, I wasn't gonna give you one. <laughs> <laughs> what have you even been doing here, Sheriff? <laughs> All right, so you rolled what for tribal medicine? A four. A four! All right, so you return to sitting back on the ground, and mm -hmm. once again you put your hands on the earth, but this time you try and still your mind, like Black Elk has taught you. You try and open your senses, like Black Elk has taught you. Not your actual ears, but your spirit ears. That's the best way he could explain it to you. Uh, it was a really difficult conversation to have with him. <laughs> and as you open your spirit ears, you, you hear a distant thumping, as though from creatures underground, like the sound a rabbit might make in its burrow. You feel it vibrating beneath your hands, and as you feel around, you can feel that it grows stronger in one direction and softer in another. Not the direction you were facing after spinning in a circle. Oh, no, no, no. A very different direction. But the thumping becomes very steady and consistent as you have your hands on the ground. This is it. Do you feel it, Duncan? I, I do, I do, Black Elk. It's, it, it, it's, it's right here. It's, it's like, there's like a, a, a pulsing, like, like, like the earth is saying, go. Very well. Now will you listen to the earth? Or will you try to lead? Listen. Good, you're doing really good. Yeah, thank you, thank you, I'm, it's a learn, yeah, new. Then listen, Duncan, <laughs> and lead us in the direction your spirit ears tell you to go. Oh no, there's too many quotes here. Okay, this way, everybody. All right, so Duncan, the trick is here. You have to keep your hands in contact with the ground Great. as you lead everyone on the way. Wow. So crawling across the <laughs> desert <laughs> as everyone follows behind, uh, some more quizzically than others, you eventually make your way painstakingly and not without getting a few uh, splinters in your knees to what looks like an old ramshackle structure just out in the middle of this wide open plain at night. That is where the thumping has led you. Okay. Uh, I, this, it seems to sort of di dissipate here. I do not believe this is Tombstone. Is this structure supposed to be some way to get us there? Or? Things are not always what they seem to be. And sometimes, Things can be a seam in reality. Are you saying we can pass into the hunting grounds here? What was your name again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Valeria. We, we worked together before. And... Enchanted. Oh, <laughs> oh good. Uh, I, thank you. But you knew that already, didn't you, Duncan? Oh, I knew that. <laughs> yeah. I was like... Right on the cusp of, a, of, a, of saying it, it was like right there. Does it seem like he's telling the truth? I was... No. I thought as much. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, because you seem... You it's, seem it's okay, it's okay. I just, yeah. Yeah, you're fine. It seems you have led us to a seam, Duncan. <laughs> That's, that was the joke I was going to make, Black Elk. You did good, Kevin. Well, too slow again. <laughs> You've got to wake up pretty early in the morning to get a joke over on old Black Elk. You're good. You've got a good tight five, Black Elk. Now, retrieve from your medicine bag the materials we need to open this seam, Duncan. Uh, look, I, I do very much appreciate that you're teaching him to do these things, but is this going to take a really long time again? It's impossible to say. <laughs> teaching, much like life, is full of frustration. Look, Black Elk, lives are at stake. If there's any way that we can make haste in this, then we must do it. I completely understand. Duncan, yep. very quickly, okay. pull the things yep. out of your medicine bag. <laughs> Got it. Petrified wood. Yep. Eagle feather. Stone dagger. Got two of those. Great. Actually, Duncan, as you go to pull these things out of your medicine bag, you realize, in your haste, you did not pack your medicine bag. Oh, yeah. oh no. So I've got 
Let's see, you said in, in, eag in eagle feather? I'm just going to keep this on. <laughs> <laughs> eagle feather, yes. Yep. Yep. Eagle feather. Eagle Petrified feather. wood. Eagle, yep. Stone dagger. Petrified wood. Bring them out. Stone dagger. Do you have them, Professor? I, yeah, I, I, um, yeah, oh, man. Do you remember back there when I was crawling on the ground to find how we got here yes. and the, the raccoons came? No. <laughs> there were raccoons? Do you remember that? No. Maybe I was the only one? Yeah. There were, yeah. There were no I raccoons. Think they, I think they stole my medicine why bag. Would, why raccoons, would raccoons, they're tricky. Why, why would raccoons steal your medicine I was bag? right behind you, and unless you were mm -hmm. hallucinating, I'm pretty sure there were no I could have been. I could have been. Yeah. But even What's fake the raccoons are tricky, and they can... <laughs> And as you both yeah. debate the nature of fake rat raccoons, <laughs> Valeria, mm. give me a smarts roll. Okay. That I can do. Oh, actually, no, you have a cult. I do. Give me an occult roll. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a little lower of a die, but that's okay. That's not my fault. Well, it's a five. <laughs> a five. Yes. Um, you play back in your head the things that Black Elk said that he needed, and you always keep uh, a case with you of various uh, accoutrements that you might need for any sort of occult endeavor you might happen upon. Uh, you're pretty sure you have all of those ingredients on hand. Duncan, Yeah. we talked about the importance of making sure your medicine bag is not raided by raccoons. I, I, I remember Black Elk. I didn't think we were going to run into raccoons in the desert. We bury our bag beneath a tree to mm -hmm. keep raccoons from digging in it. It, I'm working on a rhyme to make yeah. it easier to remember. <laughs> so as this conversation is happening, I, I believe I, the, the case I have is actually sort of like a contraption that I can open up and then pull things out. So I have taken the case and started, op opening, started opening it up. And as I, I'm trying to go, I'm pulling out pieces and going, yes, I think this was one of them, this was one of them. All right, Black Elk, uh, Professor, here. The, these are the ingredients you need, yes? Oh. What was your name again? <laughs> it's, it's Valeria Batten. Charmed, I'm sure. Okay, well I have, that's great, yes. Yes, indeed, but we do need to hurry. Fantastic, then we may begin the ritual. Oh, thank God the raccoons just left it in your stuff. Don't get, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I agree. I keep those raccoons going. What? A white fate ship. Oh my god. Duncan! <laughs> Got it. Mr. Growth is in a hurry. Yes. We must begin the ritual. I will lead the rest of you in the chant. Duncan, you know what to do with these items. <laughs> and Duncan, <laughs> I'll be goddamned. <laughs> but you do actually know hey. what to do with these items. <laughs> This was one ritual that they drilled you on over and over. <laughs> Laughing crow, just hitting your hands with a stick every time you made the wrong word or said the wrong thing until your knuckles bled and they just <laughs> laughed and laughed. But you do remember this ritual. This we are going to run as a dramatic task. Oh, okay. So, everyone is going to be adding in their own input to it. You will each be dealt a card. Remember, if you are dealt a club, that is a complication and could potentially end the entire ritual. All of you will be chanting, led by Black Elk, to assist Duncan. Since you are not shamans, you will be making this roll at a minus two. Ow. Remember, you can always choose to not roll if you feel like it might be dangerous. But Duncan, you will be making your roll, your tribal medicine roll, with no negative. Come on, I have a cult. A cult? Oh, I thought you said you had a cold. I yeah. I thought I have a cold. Well. Oh, I heard a cold. Come on. No benefits for people who are sick. Get you. Um, I will let you make your roll at a minus one, then, okay. Valeria. But only because you have a cold. It's very kind of you. All right, three rounds to get 12 Ooh. successes. Ooh, okay. Are you ready, Duncan? Yes. King of Hearts. Six of spades for you, Miss Willa McGowan. Four of diamonds for Valeria. Two of diamonds okay. for Abram Growth. As Black Elk begins to lead you all in this chant, you, you arrange yourself in a loose uh, circle around this ramshackle structure, just barely more than a floor and what remains of a chimney, and begin to chant along in time with him. 
You begin the ritual in the middle of this structure, placing the items on the floor. Give us a tribal medicine roll at no penalty. Okay. Round one begins. Uh, that's a five. A five, which will be one success. Would you like to keep it or would you like to try for more? I'd like to keep it. Duncan will keep it. So as you array the items out in the middle of the circle, hearing the chant begin, you start focusing your attention and begin a chant of your own, separate but with a cadence that sort of rides in and out of the lilting cadence of the chant that Black Elk is leading everyone in, forming a sort of loose vocal harmony. One success, hand in your card. Next up, Willamay McGowan. Luckily, we just went from right <laughs> to did. left, so this is going to be very easy for me. Planned. You can choose to chant, or you can choose to encourage Duncan in some way, if you think that would be even worth your time. What skill would you like to use? I mean, I'm concentrating. I guess we're gonna chant. You're gonna chant? Mm -hmm. All right, so I will let you uh, roll notice for that, uh, which is good for you. You're basically watching what Black Elk does and trying to emulate it as, as closely as you can. Uh, so you do get a plus two bonus to your notice roll because you grew up trying to keep an eye on children. <laughs> hey, you aced it. You aced Ooh, it! Eight. So roll that one again. Nine plus two is 11. A success with a raise, one shy of a second raise. Would you like to keep it? Or try for better? Don't let me tempt you. I'm just here to I'm facilitate gonna stay. things. You're going to stay. Two successes as you start to chant, following along very closely with what Black Elk is saying. Hand in your card. Valeria Batten. Yes. Would you like to join in the, in the chant or try and uh, support Duncan? I... I'm going to guess support Duncan. You seem like such a nice and warm individual. <laughs> no. <laughs> I will join in the chant. Maybe right. I can chant better. I don't know if you can chant better, but you can sure try. Give okay. me a cult at a minus one. OK. Ooh, I aced it on my eight. So that is at a minus one. Yes. Uh, it's also 11. An 11. Oh, one shy of <laughs> two raises, one. but that's still two successes. It is, OK. Keeping it? Yeah. Yeah, I'll keep it. I'll Hand keep in your it. card. Okay. So you begin to chant with Black Elk as well, but there's a competitive edge to what you're doing. Like you're trying to figure <laughs> out the, the the chant and see if you can guess chant what louder. the next bit's gonna be before. Yeah. yeah, chant louder than Black Elk. Whatever you feel is proper. Uh, Abram Growth. So Abram Abram wants to support him, uh, but doesn't feel quite comfortable chanting uh, with the whole thing. It feels a, a little. Off. He's like, that's not really my bag. It's not my wheelhouse. So he will put a hand on Duncan's shoulder and just kind of quietly, in like with the cadence of what he is chanting, he's going to uh, recite the lyrics to Onward Christian Soldier. Okay, all right. An interesting and very collaborative move. However, it could mess up Duncan's own internal sure. rhythm. So give me, uh, give me a roll at a minus two. What am I rolling? Uh, well, that sounds like a faith roll to Great, me. Great, because I'm much better at faith than a lot of other things. <laughs> <laughs> you want to pick a different one? Oh, we'll fine, we'll see. No, faith is great. All right, so that's five minus two, which is a three. Okay, Abram. so I will reroll that. All right, spending a white faith chip to reroll. Mm -hmm. Ah! Ooh, that's still not great. So I'm actually going to use this one as a blue fate chip. All right, you're going to expend your use of fate's favor to add a d6 to this. Yeah. No more fate's favor. Uh, so that's just one success because it was total uh, seven. One success. Nine. All right. So you step up next to Duncan and put a hand on his shoulder and start to try and emulate the the rhythm of the chant, but but add your own flair to it. And for a moment. Duncan seems to get <laughs> a little confused, but eventually he, he settles into it and everything sort of returns and begins to flow. That is one round down. Next round, Duncan. <clears throat> yes. Six of clubs. I don't want it. Hold on. I'll let you turn it back, send okay. it back in a little bit. Three okay. of spades for Willa May. Three of no! clubs for Valeria. King of diamonds for Abram. Now. As you so astutely noted, Duncan, if you keep that club, not only do you get a minus two on your roll, you also, if you fail, will completely mess up this ritual, and everyone is counting on you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can't You've been that. in this position yeah. before. You're going to spend a fate trip to redraw? Yes. An ace of clubs. Oh, come on. But you get to go sooner now, so that's fun. Woo. 
I, I want. Are you going to keep? Hold on. First, we got to deal okay, with Duncan okay. here. Duncan, <laughs> no. keeping it? No, I'm not. All right, you're going to redraw. Come on, just for the lulls. Oh, yes. <laughs> An eight of hearts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yay. Yeah. yay. Valeria. Yes. Would no, you also yes. like to redraw? Yes. Spending a red fate chip as a white to redraw a ten of spades. I'll yes. take it. I almost had you. <laughs> no, you didn't. All right, this time uh, we almost went left to right. Way to combo break it, Willa May. All right, Abram Grove. Combo breaker. <laughs> Okay, so um, Abram is going to, uh, because he saw that his uh, singing kind of like threw him off. Seems like just, that might be a dangerous road to continue down. He's just gonna, he's just gonna stop and he's kinda, kind of, uh, like say to him quietly without getting to, he's like, you're here, like you're here for a reason. You're the person who we have chosen to do this. And, and God wouldn't have put you in this position if you weren't capable of doing it or your spirits, they're all on the same side and they will guide you through this. All right, Duncan's trying to focus, Abram. I, 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 I'm <laughs> keeping it soothing. Give us a persuade roll for that. That's what that sounds like to me. I sure. feel like people voted for me to do this. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay. uh, yes. Aced it. There you go. So that's an 11. Uh, minus two. Okay. So a nine. Still two successes. All right, hand in your card. Duncan does seem to be responding very positively to someone believing in him for a change. Oh. No, it's fine, he's fine. Wow. <laughs> On that note, Valeria, yeah, uh -huh. you're next. Are you going to also believe in Duncan? Uh, I'm gonna believe that I'm gonna help him to make this happen. That track, so rolling a cult again, yeah. continue your chant. Yes, indeed. Minus one. Okay, uh, so that puts me at a Six. A six, which is one success. Would you like to keep it? <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or risk it all in no. the lightning round. No, I'll, uh, yeah, no, no, I'll keep it. One I'll success. It. All right, as, you, as, your as your competitive chanting with Black Elk uh, continues <laughs> to pick up, you feel like you're starting to get the hang of this, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think you're picking up a few words even. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can start to like figure out a way that you can turn this to your own means later on, but not now. Now you're helping. <laughs> Duncan. Over Valeria's shouted chanting <laughs> and Abram constantly whispering soothing words in your ear. <laughs> you try and focus on the next bit of the ritual. Give me a tribal medicine roll. That no minuses, right? No minuses. This is what you've been training for. That's another five. That's one success. Would you um, like to keep it? Let's see, you got two successes. You got one, one success. Um. Tick tock, Duncan. Yeah. The spirits yes, I'm will keeping not wait. It. I'm All right, one it. success. As you as you begin to uh, to arrange the the items in the the configuration that has been burned into your mind and knuckles by Laughing Crow and Black Elk, Willa May, what would you like to do? Continue the chant. Yeah. All right. So you got your initial notice bonus. Now, however, it's going to be canceled out by the minus two. So you're just rolling straight notice. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> That's a four. Oh. That's a success. Would you like to keep it? Yeah. All right. The second round has ended with an unknown number of successes remaining, depending on who's been keeping track. You feel a sort of static charge start to build in the air, and you feel that thumping beneath your hands again, Duncan, but now it seems to be coming from multiple spaces all around you, like there's a, a rabbit warren beneath you, and all of them are having a great time. All right, Duncan, eight of clubs. What, I put you back. <laughs> King of clubs. Oh, come on. Oh, no. Ace of spades. Okay, I like that. <laughs> Queen of Spades. <clears throat> All right. Would either one of you like to spend a fate ship to redraw your card? Yes, Willa May is sending this back. Not today, says Willa May. Instead, oh. she gets a Joker! Joker! Pretty good. Pretty good spending of a fate ship. So that means uh, everybody yes. gets a fate yes. ship. Starting with Willa May. Thank you. Well done. Legend! White. It's a legend! Get it! Legend! Get it! Get it! Legend. Get it! Get it. White. <laughs> okay, I'll get it. Megan, this is why we don't tell you about the legend. <laughs> <laughs> and legend! Oh, Red. Right. <laughs> only, no, I got a white one on. It white. White. <laughs> why didn't you get the legend chip? You I also get a plus it. two on this. Awesome, thank you. All right, um, Duncan, 
Would you like to spend a fate chip to redraw your card? No. No? I'm gonna keep my, I need these. All right, fair enough. Uh, you can go at any point. Would you like to go first, Willa May, or would you like to wait? I'm gonna go first. All right, Willa May. You are noticing that something seems weird with Duncan. He seems like he is doing this right, but something seems like it might be starting to turn. His words are faltering a little bit. He seems suddenly unsure of himself. I'm going to help him focus on this. Okay. All right. Yeah. So um, would you like to, like, maybe with persuade, whisper some kind words to him, or perhaps... You lean in the ear that Abram is not <laughs> leaning into. Can I, can I intimidate him you into it? You absolutely <laughs> can intimidate him into doing a better ritual. I would like to intimidate him into yeah. doing a better ritual. Uh, is there anything in particular you'd like to say to him, or would you just like to stare steel-like steel <laughs> into his ear? I want to pretty much just give him that silent look that the fear of God has put into all children. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. As any orphanage owner and runner can do. Give us that intimidate oh, roll. Okay. Now you have a plus two to your intimidate as yes. well, okay, which cool. is canceled out by the minus two, but okay. is kept by the plus two from your joker. So roll Woo! intimidate plus two. All right. It's a plus five. two. So, so that's a five. So that's one success. Which is a success. Whoa. Yay! Yay! That's good. Excellent. <laughs> and then, as everything seems like it might be about to just go completely awry, as Duncan has a history of doing, Willa May leans in and stares at him. <laughs> and after just a brief moment, Duncan, you can feel an icy gaze on you, and you crack one eye to find Willa May staring at you in a look that just screams, you better not. <laughs> and you find the words. Your knuckles start to ache as you yeah. remember your training. <laughs> <laughs> and with that last bit of encouragement, everyone hand in their cards. <gasps> the ritual has been completed, and the thumping reaches a gigantic crescendo. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, good job, good job. You all deserve that. Yay. And as it does, the ground, the boards that made up the foundation of this structure begin to rattle and shake, and dust and dirt start shooting up in the air from the cracks beneath them as the boards start to fall away. And as you all scramble back from this, it reveals a giant pit of infinite blackness with twinkling stars. Uh, I'm under the impression suddenly that we are meant to enter this hole. <laughs> Is that correct? Yep. Can anyone back up this gentleman's assessment? Not that I do not trust him. I'm pretty sure, yes, that is the intention with the hopes that we will be exiting it in Tombstone very quickly, correct? I see. It's just the last time I went through uh, a gateway like this, things did not go well for me. Uh, yes, it is very dangerous to enter the hunting grounds, as far as I understand it. Duncan, tell them about the ways of the hunting grounds. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's just warming up. <laughs> Black Elf, just to save time, could you maybe just give us a summary? I'll just, <laughs> I'll prod Duncan, how about that? Sure. I'm really trying to let him learn and lead. Uh, and we appreciate that, definitely. Yeah. Maybe now's not the time to learn. Please, whatever your name is, be silent while I focus. <laughs> Duncan. Yeah, yes, Black Elk. The hunting grounds. Hunting grounds are a place, are a place where, where sure, sure dark spirits, spirits dwell. dwell. But also, but also the, the spirits are the, the land, land as well. As well. <laughs> and this is, and this is clearly, clearly a, a clearly a. So do we just jump in? Or? Oh my God! Hold, hold on, I've almost got him there. Spirit, Spirit trail. trail. Mm -hmm. That the spirits, spirits have, have deemed, deemed will take us where we want. Uh, so while this is happening, I'm is everyone just, just jumping in? I'm out. just going. Just kind of <laughs> Duncan's just like. <laughs> okay. Have a lot of time. Yeah. So you guys all just sort of like leap yes, into the hole. 
Okay, uh, so Abrams jumping in, Willa Mays jumping in, Valeria, you jump in. Stoker just looks around and shrugs and jumps in after you. All right. Leaving just- I told them all, Black Elk, and I told them everything. Most importantly, most importantly, we have to let you all know all about the, the inherent dangers, dangers in taking a spirit trail. <laughs> which I will now divulge in great detail. <laughs> Duncan? Yes? Is it suddenly quiet? They're enraptured. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for your attention. <laughs> They're nodding gravely. We should just go. Well, that's the thing, Duncan. I cannot follow you. I must remain here to, to close this gateway behind for who knows what dark forces could find their way in or out of this seam. You have learned all I can teach you, Duncan. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. Well, I'm also a little unsure, yeah. but <laughs> at some point a baby bird must leave the nest and fly. Or fall and break its wings. Oh, so someone yeah. is still yeah. here. <laughs> Duncan. That was the wind. Uh, the wind. It was that rac foul temptress. Raccoon. <laughs> you must go alone. Okay. I uh -huh. believe in you. <laughs> that felt Almost in you go, <laughs> and he shoves you into the hole, into the hunting grounds. You all find yourselves on a starlit trail in an infinite black expanse that only stretches out one direction. Behind you is nothing. Ahead, more darkness, but you see the shimmering trail continue on. Duncan comes falling haphazardly out of nowhere yeah. and suddenly lands near all of you. Oh, Professor. welcome. Yep, that's so you got it. Where is Black Elk? Uh, he, um, he had to close that. So he couldn't close it from in here? No, oh. no, it doesn't work that way. All right. Yeah. So we are left with your uh, wise guidance. Well, <laughs> as far as I understand it, this is not the safest of places, but as long as we continue forward. Oh um, yeah, yeah, no. Nope. You're in good hands with me. Are we? What were you gonna say, Willamette? I think you should lead us. Oh, oh, <laughs> well, I mean, if you think so, I would be happy to. Do I know how to do this? Uh, well, I mean, there's a, tr there's a clear path. Yeah. It seems like, I mean, you know, you're, you're no expert, but. I mean. You know. Do, when in Rome. I think we should take this trail. I assume that. Oh yeah, the trail that's leading. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. You got it. And let's go forward. Okay. Let's go forward, like he said. Yep. All right. So you all start <laughs> you walking along this trail. <laughs> it's impossible to tell how long you must continue and how long you've been walking. As you continue to walk, the featureless black void around you just stretches out everywhere, muffling all sound and making you feel, for some reason, like you should whisper, lest you waken something out beyond the confines of your trail. And as you're thinking that, everyone give me a notice roll. Uh. Yeah. Four. Four. Ten. Ten. Ten? Whoa. Ten. Ten? Yeah, right. Ten. <laughs> Seven. Great. You all succeeded. So you all start to hear whispers from the darkness. Ah. Valeria, mm. a muffled voice speaks up suddenly from the darkness to your left. You seem like someone who seeks great power. I can show you that power. Come. Come to me. Give me a spirit roll at a minus two, Valeria. Uh, okay. And just hang on to that result. Don't announce it just yet. Unless you're going to re-roll. Are you going to re-roll? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and re-roll. <laughs> that, that was... Did you want to add a d6 to it? No. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yes. You're going to add a d6? Yes. All right. I'll just draw another one from my bag here. It's just a blue. 
Okay. All right, Close. hang on to that. Okay. Uh, Abram, you succeeded with the rays, so you definitely hear whispers from the void. <clears throat> Mr. Groth? It, 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 it's, it's me. You, you maybe don't remember me. I, I was one of the, the kids at the, at the orphanage from, from Gomorrah. I got, I got lost in here. I can't find my way out of the dark. Can you, can you help me, Mr. Groth? I'm, I'm lost. Where are you? Can, can you I'm give just me... right over here. I can, I can almost see you. Can you just reach out to me? Can you give me some sort of signal? I'm just right off in the darkness. Please, Mr. Groth, please. I'm lost. Give me a spirit roll. Did I give you a minus two? At a minus two. <laughs> oh. Sorry. <laughs> oh. All right, I'm going to reroll it once. Okay. So that's a four. Okay, hang on to that. Oh, Willa May. Yeah. Hmm. Willa. Hmm. Willa. What? <laughs> well, don't be so cross, Willa. I haven't seen you in years. Well, maybe I didn't want to see you. That is no way to speak to your sister. Then I really don't want to see you. Uh, as all of you are dealing with your own whispers, Willa is turning sassily to the darkness, <laughs> letting it have it. Well, that is no way to greet me after all these years. Now, are you going to come over here so we can wrestle or what? No, I don't want to wrestle. Willa, I am going to defend my title. You oh. get over here and you wrestle with me. How about you go wrestle with yourself? It's really hard to tell what's going to motivate any one individual <laughs> character in the hunting ground. Give me a spirit roll at a All minus right. two, Willa May. <laughs> <laughs> to resist, to resist uh, taking that title back from your long lost sister. Wait, oh, that was, I'm going to go, there it is. Okay, so, uh, yeah, Six four. minus two, four. Yeah. Success. Yeah. Duncan. <laughs> you also succeeded. Mm -hmm. Duncan. Black Elk's voice speaks up from the from the disappearing trail behind oh, you. Yes, Duncan. It. I, listen, I forgot one important thing. Quick, come back here so that I may relay one final bit of wisdom to you. Oh, sure. Yeah. Spirit roll at a minus two. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Well, hold on. This is like the most obvious one. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's not good. <laughs> that's a one and a two, Duncan. Yeah. Here you go. Fate ship to re-roll. Uh, it's a four. All of you are tempted to venture out beyond the bounds of the starlit path and into the darkness for the, the various and sundry different people who call out to you. But all of you, as you feel yourself move to do so, suddenly realize that the darkness outside the path, the closer you get to it, seems hungry in some way, seems to almost be reaching out to you with tendrils that cannot quite cross the confines of the road that you walk upon. And just before you reach out into the darkness, you snatch your hands back and realize that maybe there are things out there that are best left alone. Right, yeah, don't, don't go out that way. Yeah, I, I, I remember that. <laughs> Let's get out of this place as fast as we can. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yep, follow the trail. So after resisting the voices from the darkness, they quiet down. As you follow the trail, you see up ahead what looks like some sort of brighter light, almost like a, a, a softly glowing lantern in the distance. Do you want to continue towards it? Yep, I head into the light. All right, you all head into the light one by one. And as you do, you f suddenly find yourselves feeling the night air caress your faces. A breeze comes uh, from somewhere unknown, a hot, a hot breeze blowing across the, the warm desert night, unseasonably warm. And you see that the glowing light is coming from up ahead. There appear to be a ring of boulders, and there is the flickering light of what looks like a campfire of some kind from up ahead. And that's all you see. Very dramatic timing. Yeah. Is it on the trail? The trail is gone. Oh. You are now back as far as you can tell in the world that you left. And looking behind you, you see no opening, no trail, no darkness, just the dark expanse of the desert, illuminated somewhat <clears throat> by the stars and moon above. So is it possible that you can do what you did with the whole, you know, hands on the ground pulsating thing? 
I'm, y yes, of course, I can, I could do that whenever I want. Yeah, how about you do that now? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> As Duncan is preparing to prove that, yeah, he can do that again, everyone <laughs> give me a notice roll. Okay. Five. Five. Two. Two. Nine. Nine. Five. Five. All right, so Valeria, you don't hear anything over your frustration with Duncan. Uh, <laughs> the rest of you hear what sounds like soft voices coming from the other side of the ring of boulders from around the campfire. Um, Abram, you rolled a five. five. One of those voices sounds slightly familiar to you. A small, little, nasally, wheezing voice that suddenly puts you in mind of the horrors that you witnessed at the hands of the Fourth Ring Circus in Gamora. A little odious man, you're pretty sure his name was Kevin, who used to follow uh, Ivor Hawley around. It sounds very much like him. And another voice you don't recognize, a woman, perhaps? So, Abram will kind of like gesture quiet to everyone else and go over to Valeria. I think that there might be some of your former friends over there. And I tell her what I, what I heard in the whole thing. Well, if that is true, then we have to proceed with caution. Know how dangerous they are. Dangerous, they're... They may be dangerous, but it's our job to try and get rid of them. Is that a stage whisper? Yes. Just check it. <laughs> I don't disagree, but you know that we have to be cautious. All right. Okay. Is that also a stage whisper? Yeah. <laughs> just check it. <laughs> if you want us to actually whisper, we can do it. No, that's fine. I'm just making sure you're being quiet. We are. Hashtag stage whisper. Right. Hashtag stage whisper. Let's approach carefully and quietly. If we can get the drop on them, well, if we were brought here by the professor's portal, Maybe we were supposed to find and stop them, whatever it is they're doing. I agree. So, I think Abram will probably try and, because there's a bunch of boulders around, uh, hopefully try and sneak up uh, <clears throat> behind them so he can get closer and hear what's being said without alerting them that he's there. Okay, so are you going alone, Abram, or is anyone joining? I, I would join. You're gonna join? Mm -hmm. um, before you decide if you're going to join or not, take a look at your character sheet and see what you have in stealth. Yeah, I don't have it good, but I still feel like <laughs> I'd probably go. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to discourage any of you from sneaking up there. I just want you to know what you're capable of. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't do it. Not gonna do it, <laughs> no. Professor? Mm -mm. You're gonna hang back a little bit. Yeah. Does anyone have higher than a D4? Nope. Willa nope. May shouts out. Uh, yes. <laughs> some, no, some no, right, fourth slow, wall breaking slow, uh, slow, yeah. <laughs> yes. So I think that Valeria would probably pull back a little bit just because she thinks she might ruin his stealth. Okay. And she's hesitant. Okay. Which So you're going to try about. and sneak up but you're going to hang back a bit. Yes, but I'm going to I'm going to follow him. I'm okay. not going to just right. stay. Okay. Be so, ready. I, I, he'll just tell everyone, be ready to back me up if things go bad. Back you up if things go you bad. You mostly just stay here <laughs> and try and be very quiet. I mean, I, I can help in a fight. Look, l listen to the spirits. That's worked very well for you. They're, yes. they're not talking right it's now. True. He can okay. help in a fight, though, and most of the time, well. And I felt a little condescended to, honestly, when you just said that. So that's... <laughs> To be fair, you deserve it. Professor, <laughs> I made a first impression of you that may have been unfair, and I sincerely apologize for condescending to you. It's not okay, unfair. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to go and try and well, hopefully get behind them without being noticed. Before you do, I'm just going to just blanket give all of you a fate chip, because I feel like you guys are just doing a really good job. <laughs> I do. With the, I with do. the things that you're saying, <laughs> resisting stuff like you're doing it. Resisting you're stuff. doing it. Man, you're nice Thank when you. we're not Legend. live. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we can edit this out Fine. in post. <laughs> can we? Oh, uh, right. No legend chip yet, but that's okay. It's still in there. I doubt it's there. All right. So, <laughs> Abram. Prove it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Abram and Valeria. Give me a stealth roll. Uh -huh. Valeria, since you are staying further back uh -huh. and you're going to let him get closer, I'll let you make yours at a plus two. Oh, good. 
Have I recovered PowerPoint? Ooh, I aced What's it. Up? Have I recovered the PowerPoint that I did at the beginning? Mm. Yes. All right, mine is a five. A five? An eight. An eight. Okay. Um, so you sneak closer, uh, Abram, and Valeria, you sort of hang back, not wanting to quite get close enough to be caught by the flickering firelight. And I, of Abram, course, have my hand on Evanor's uh, uh, pommel, I assume. <laughs> you sneak up behind one of the boulders and see if you can, you don't feel like you can quite get your uh, a safe look around, but you do get close enough to be able to hear what sounds like a muted conversation between Kevin Wainwright and some other woman. I don't understand why we have to be the ones who stay behind Wainwright. It doesn't seem fair. It's not on us to question the new master, Lorena. We were told to lie here and wait, and that is what we will do. Well, it's all well and good if you're willing to listen to whatever Adler says, but I don't know what right he has to lead us. He is the new ringmaster, and we will do as he says. Well, even so, I think it would be much easier to do what it is that is being asked of us if Christine Perfect were here instead of running off with Jonah Essex to Deadwood. But fine, I suppose we can just wait for more long, long days, just the two of us here waiting for a, a, a group that seemed to not even be coming. Uh, now, Lorena, Adler told us they were on their way and they will be here. Just be patient. Do you want to do anything else? Uh, if they like kind of quiet down for a bit, I'll like gesture over to Valeria and point the other direction. So that we can kind Back of... Back the way you came? No, 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 like the other side. Like around. I'll point one side of the rock and I'm gonna go around the other. Okay, so you're trying to get Valeria to go one way and you the other. Yeah. Valeria, do you feel like you would pick up on what he is indicating? Yeah. Yeah, you're no fool. All right, then both of you give me a stealth roll. Two. Okay. I can't keep the one I had. No, I got a four. A four? I also got a four. Um. Is it going to change your mind that you want to keep that if I tell you this is a pose? Uh, uh no. Yeah, I'm gonna... I don't yeah. have a lot of fate chips left and yeah. I'm not very good at stealth. <laughs> so you sneak off one direction, Abram. Mm -hmm. And Valeria, you sneak off the other. Meanwhile, the two of you uh, hanging back, you can see uh, what's going on? You saw Abram sneak closer. You still hear these muffled voices, but you're not sure what's going on. And then you saw Abram try and get Valeria to go around one side of the rocky, uh, the, the ring of boulders, and he sneaks off around the other. What do you two want to do? I mean, we should, we should probably... I feel like, yeah. Like they're, I mean, they're in the I'll go with her. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Before you do that, will both of you give me a notice roll? The... Yeah, that's no good. It's not good, Duncan? I'm a re I'm a re-roll. Okay. Nine. A nine? Yep. That's a success with a raise. Yeah, that's a four. All right. So um Willa May, as you are beginning to to head in and enact the plan, mm -hmm. um you feel something swoop down from above and you see just a brief shadow overhead and you look up to see what looks like three ravens just sort of lazily circling around above you before they settle down on the rocks. And as they do settle down on the rocks, you notice that there are clusters of ravens on top of many of these rocks, which you point out to Duncan. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Willa May says, <laughs> in the parlance of the children that she has spent so many years raising. Right. I'm not an actor. <laughs> no, no. I'm not a dude. You can't boot me. Um. Dom's learned a few things about Doom Town, too. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of... Uh, ravens. They're called ravens. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're watching us. Well, yeah, ravens watch. 
That's what they Are do. Are you not getting this? Uh, oh. Uh, are you sure? Oh. You think the birds are mm -hmm. watching us. For them. Yep. And as you have that realization, <laughs> all of the ravens on these rocks begin to caw and coo softly. Um, not in a way that, is all, that sounds all that unnatural to you, although you are suddenly surprised to hear that there is so much wildlife around this campfire at night. And the voices go silent for a moment as you creep around and you freeze. And then you hear uh, Kevin speak up. Your birds are being hyperactive again, Lorena. Well, I can't be blamed for everything the birds do. I don't control them, Kevin. <laughs> uh, as, as they start talking again, Abram will uh, gesture over to uh, Valeria and just... And then as soon as he finishes the countdown, he's going to pull out Evanor and like run around the uh, boulder. You run around the boulder. And Kevin and a wrinkled, stringy-haired woman who looks a bit like a bird herself are both standing there on the other side of the rock waiting for you. Hello. We are in a combat. Oh. And they saw you coming. Uh. All right. Oh. Abram Groth. King of yeah, Diamonds. King. Valeria. Two of those, I'm hesitant. Hesitant, so you can keep the eight of hearts then, not the 10 of spades. Willa May mm -hmm. and Duncan, you have not been spotted. So mm. Willa May, you get a three of spades. Duncan, a king of clubs. And then for Kevin, he can take the best of these. He's gonna keep that ace of spades there. And for Lorena, where did her card then? I hear it. There she is. She is going to keep the Eight of Clubs. I'm also gonna give them some fake chips since they're both wild cards. No, good. No. And I'm not done dealing just yet. What? Boo. Why? Because they're still the birds, yeah, of course. I knew we were gonna say that. I knew it. The birds. If you, if you've ever seen wild cards, you know that small woodland creatures are the bane of any posse at my table. The they get a joker. Oh. Come on, <laughs> really? The birds got a joker. I mean, I can't, I don't do this on purpose. <laughs> that means the bad guys get a fake chip. Oh. Come on. Who made this system? <laughs> <laughs> no one, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. Um, so the, <laughs> the birds are up first, and they are going to go. Um, Great. Lorena Great. gestures up to the tops of the rocks, and all of the birds lift up at once and start flapping their wings, circling above you, Valeria, all of them in a ring above your head okay. that starts to kick up dust around you. And as you're just trying to catch up with the situation that you've stumbled into, you look up and see a swirling red light start to form between all of these birds, which shoots down from the sky and hits you directly in the face, oh, sending you completely rigid for just one moment as something in your brain feels like it tears just a tiny bit before the birds break off and start swarming around and swooping down dangerously. That is all they do what? on their round. I don't like that, though. Well, don't worry about it. It's probably fine. Clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is going to be Kevin. Really quickly. Yes. Now, you're distracted by the birds. No chance this time, Valeria. Um, you have come around the rocks, Abram, and Kevin and Lorena are right there waiting for you. And as Kevin says, hello, he jerks out this small cane that he always carries with him and tries to club you directly across the legs. Uh, he's going to do that now. Okay. He aced it ah! on his wild oh. die. That is going to be an eight. My parry is seven. Your parry is seven. Yeah. So he beats your parry. So you are going to take some damage here, unfortunately. Ooh, uh, nice. That is an ace oh. on that damage die for 11, 13 damage. Well, Ooh, my toughness is, your toughness is six. Your toughness is six, so that is going to beat that. Uh, not quite not a, with a raise, so yeah. you would be shaken and wounded unless you want to soak. Uh, I am going to soak. 
Okay, actually, I'm not gonna soak. Okay, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, no, I, I'm gonna try and soak it. <laughs> Might as well not take the Are risk. It's a sure? real roller coaster with ways, you, Abram. I've got ways to try and get the wounds back, but like, why do that when you could just not have the wounds at all? That old chestnut. All right, yep. so give us a soak roll. Okay, so I am rolling my vigor. Uh, that's a five. A five is enough to soak it. So as as Kevin whips out with this cane, you have barely more than a moment to bring Evanor to bear and parry that blow from the little man before you jump back, suddenly aware that this might be a more difficult encounter than you thought it would be with this strange little person. <laughs> I'm stronger than I look. <laughs> uh, next up, <laughs> Professor Duncan. Oh wait, no, sorry, Abram, you have the King of Diamonds, so you're gonna go before the King of Clubs. Okay, um, Abram will just like, basically kind of snarl at Kevin and just be like, you scum, and just bring Evanor down to try and uh, swing at him and try and cleave him in half. Wow. I don't know if it'll do that. I'm just trying to hit him. Real man of the cloth but there. All right. <laughs> hey, he doesn't deserve God's mercy. Okay. <laughs> Give me a fighting roll with Evanor. Okay. That is ace. Woo! Okay, so that's an eight. An eight. All right. So you bring Evanor swinging down, and with preternatural quickness, Kevin has Oh, jumped what? his cane into the other hand and brings it up to block and just smiles at you from underneath the crook of his arm. You're going to have to be faster than that. <laughs> well, I've got God's speed behind me. Prove it. I don't actually have the spell God's speed. I know, but... hand in your card, <laughs> Abram Groth. Unless there's anything else you'd like to do on your turn, would you no. like to turn and run? No. Okay. <laughs> All right, then next up, Professor Duncan. So you hear the unmistakable sound of a melee breaking out on the other side of those boulders. You see the swirling birds do this strange thing and a red beam come down on the other side of the boulders as well before they break off and start cawing and swooping. You're over here with Willa May. What would you like to do? Uh, okay, they're in trouble. We should help. I don't know if this is going to work. And he's going to try to run around the way that Abram went. Okay. And he's going to try and try and get behind Abram and uh, if he can, with the, the sword down and, and and like hit, he's going to try to cast smite on Evanor. Okay, so you are going to have to run in order to make it over there and, and do that. I'm gonna need more of the I'm gonna need just uh, more than a two on your run die in order for you to make it over there. Okay. So give me a d6 roll. And I have minus one to pace. You have minus one to pace? Yeah. Because I'm okay. elderly. So more than a three. Okay. I forgot you were elderly. Yeah. Yeah. Not so quick on your feet. It's a three, but you need more than a three. Should we allow him to do it on a three? I'm going to throw that out to you guys. Yes! The assembled crowd says yes. Three or better, not more than a three. <laughs> so you run over there, hobbling light, slightly as you go, and out of breath you come up behind Abram Groth, who is mm. in the midst of a pitched battle with a small, strange-looking man fighting with a cane, and you reach out and try to cast Smite on his weapon. However, this is going to be at a minus two because you had to run, Duncan. Yep. So give me pri tribal medicine at a minus two. Uh, let's see, that's a, that's a three. Uh, it's not enough, Duncan. It's not. I'm going to re-roll. All right. Re-rolling with a red fate chip. Dang it. That's not going to work either. So I'm like, I, I run over there and I, I'm like, and I grab your sword and I'm all like, you can do this. <laughs> and as his hand sort of like grabs onto your wrist, he says that and looks at your sword, and you for just a moment look at your sword, and nothing seems to happen um, before Duncan just sort of like okay. awkwardly lets go of your arm. You, and I clap you on the back. He's weird. And I just kind of <laughs> go back. Okay, you step back. <laughs> yeah. Kevin, meanwhile, sees this happen and whispers back, Lorena, they have friends. Hand in your card, Duncan. Uh, Valeria, hearts beats clubs, so you're gonna go before Lorena. You, 
are reeling from whatever happened with the birds, but you regain your senses to see them swirling overhead and also see that Abram is in trouble and Duncan doesn't seem to be sure what it is that he can do to help. What would you like to do? Well, before I can do anything else, I have to get rid of these birds, so I want to soul blast them. So I, I'm basically going to, my hands will light up green, and uh, I'm going to shoot a bolt at each one of them. Okay. There are at least eight birds. Oh, I thought there were three. Okay. No, nope, more than three. Okay, well, I'll shoot at three of them then. You're gonna shoot at three, so you're gonna yes. cast three soul blasts. Yes. So that's gonna be at a minus four for each soul blast. Oh, I thought, oh, okay. I, I misunderstood that. Uh, uh, for three power points, you can cast a more powerful soul blast. I see, I was thinking of it as something else. Uh, then I will just do that. I will cast, uh, where, where I am, can I see? I mean, I can see what's happening here. You're on right? the other side of the embankment from him, so you see uh, him fighting against Kevin and Lorena right behind him across the campfire. Okay. You came around but the other side. they don't have, side. like, cover from me or anything they like that. They do not have cover from me. The birds? No. No, the birds are wheeling overhead. Lorena. They also do not have cover from me. I'm going to shoot at her then because I think she's the one. I'll, I'll do with three power points. Okay. So you're going to shoot one massive bolt and spend three power points too. So as you focus, yes. are you going to be spending your own energy to do this, or are you going to make a deal with the devil no, to I'm do so? No, I'm going to spend my own in this. All right. <laughs> Give me an arcane oh, skill roll. Ah, uh, it's a five. A five, which is a success because this is just like a shooting roll. So you, your, your hands light up green and you bring them together, merging the flame from both of them in a large, ball of flaming green energy shoots out from your hands and strikes towards Lorena. Give me a 3d6 roll. That is how much damage you are doing. Ooh, I aced it on two die. Uh-oh. 17. 18. 19. 20. I aced it again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this sounds like a Six. lot of damage. You aced it again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 36 damage. 36 damage. Yes. All right. So Lorena is behind Kevin, focused on Abram, chanting something up to the birds. And before she has a chance to finish that chant, your giant ball of green flame strikes her squarely from behind. And you hear a splintering crack as her body spasms and you see Clearly, she is bending in ways that people are not supposed to bend, and she tumbles to the ground. As I do that, I say, Lorena, control your pets. <laughs> Pretty good. And actually, I'm going to give you a fate chip, both for that and also acing so much <laughs> on that one roll. Ah, legend. yes. Legend! legend. Oh, it's red. Just red. Well done. Uh, Lorena is next, um, but she is somewhat indisposed. However, Lying on the ground as she is, motionless you would think, bent and twisted from the force of your impact. You see her body start to twitch, and you see what looks like something bulging up from underneath her black dress on the back where her shoulder blades are. You're not sure entirely what's happening there, but it doesn't seem good. That is her turn. Willa May. Pulling up the rear, you saw Duncan run up, shout something, stand there for a moment, and then sort of awkwardly back away from the fight. What would you like to do? I'm gonna go after that little thing. I'm going over that way. You're going around. Yeah. You went around the way Valeria was going. Oh, right? I was. You were gonna split off. Oh and yeah, follow yeah. Her. My bad. All right, so you're gonna run around Valeria. I'm gonna need a run roll from you. Yeah, sure. What was that? Six. I need more than a two. D six. That's not fair. Cause yes. A two or better. Okay. You, you, you nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> Willa May, with a grace that belies your age and station, you run across the earth and run up right behind Valeria, just in time to see her strike down Lorena as she falls to the ground. You see birds swooping overhead. You see Abram in a sword fight with a small little man. What would you like to do? Go after the little man. After the little man? Yeah. All right. Are you going to sonic defraculator him? It will be difficult to do that without catching I Abram know. or potentially Valyria in the blast. I know. Damn it. However, there is an enticing target swirling above your head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seems like the kind of thing oh, yeah. that an area of effect damage yeah. thing would oh, be really. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't like 
little men. Um, <laughs> I understand. Yeah, they remind guess, you of the children. Yes. <laughs> it, it's a Who thing. you love, I, but I was, you know. I was going to go for the birds, and then I saw the little man. Um, yes, I'm going to do the birds. That was what I was originally going to do, but then you said little man. It, All right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I triggered you with the little man. But you, <laughs> you see that it seems like they have that at least well, somewhat well in hand for the time being. And you see that the birds are swooping down, claws extended, like they're going to join the fray. And you can't have that. Not yeah. when you've got a fully loaded sonic defraculator on your person. Yeah. You want to unload on the birds? Yeah. All right, give me a shooting roll. Are you going to spend two shots of Ghost Rock, or are you going to power this up? I mean, I mean, what, 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 what is <laughs> it? One, per, one for two, so this would be like two? So you can do a little bit of damage with uh, No, I mean, like that. how many Ghost Rock is this? You've got, you've got six remaining uh, for from, the one. from this one. Thing gotcha. Of Ghost Rock. That's my favorite. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do four. I mean, All right. like, I'm, yeah. Burn that midnight oil and light them up. All right, give me a shooting roll. <laughs> That's not gonna do it. That's definitely not gonna do it. You're gonna need to re-roll that. Oh yeah, that's an ace on the d6. An 11, which is a hit with a raise. Ooh. So, uh, will you roll 5d6 damage? Oh. Oh. All right. I want a no, defraculator. Right? <laughs> a gigantic pulse of sonic energy just starts emanating from this thing as it lights up and shoots up into the sky. Okay. You aced on two of those. Woo! Okay, so Great. Four. 12, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. uh, another 12, that's 28. Uh, plus, that's 36. 36 yes! damage! 36 damage! 36 damage that's from the Sonic Defractor. That's a pretty good one. That's a good damage I'll give you a fate chip for that. Well, let me go to the bottom. Hold on, hold on. Okay, yeah, get go it, all the way it, to the it, bottom. Get it. God damn it. All you got was a blue one. <laughs> Willamay, you may not like little men, but apparently you detest birds. <laughs> <laughs> and as you light them up with the Sonic Defractor, not one, not two, but all eight of yes. these swooping, swooping ravens just completely implode in the air. <laughs> all uh, feathers. They're small just bodies, not able to contain. It's like snowing. <laughs> exactly. As black oh, feathers <laughs> start to float down among, among the battlefield, um, you just blow off the steam from the tip of your sonic defraculator. Hand in that card. Well done. Switching to a different deck because we drew a joker. <sighs> Abram Growth. All right. Ten of spades. Valeria Batten, four of clubs, or you can keep this four of clubs. <laughs> Willem A, king of diamonds. Cool. King of hearts for our professor. Uh, Lorena for no reason, a jack of clubs. <laughs> and what? Kevin Wainwright, uh, we'll be keeping that ace of spades. <laughs> okay, so uh, up first is Kevin again. So you are over there by him. Valeria, now that you've had a chance to get your bearings, uh -huh. uh, Give me an occult roll. Okay. Four. Four. All right. You see Kevin over there moving with lightning speed and striking with force that seems impossible for his stature and relative health. He's a sickly, malformed little person. Mm. Uh, you see Abram's look of confused shock as he's trying desperately to stay uh, stay in this fight and parry the blows from this cane. And you remember a ritual that Ivor Hawley spoke about conducting long ago as a gag on Kevin. Uh, something <laughs> to make him, something to make him a, a little more fierce whenever uh, Ivor or one of the other casters in the fourth ring might need help. Something that was important about protecting casters and being near them. That's what you remember. Meanwhile, Kevin's coming at you again. You are fighting uh, for your life here against the, the unnatural force coming from Kevin's How are you so Kevin's fast, you little monster? Uh, that's a terrible roll, but he has fate chips to spare, so I'm gonna spend one to re-roll that. There goes ah, that time. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's a zero. I have an extra d10. <laughs> no! Uh, that is going to be a good, seven, good, which meets your parry, <laughs> I believe. All right, thank you very much. All right, so he is going to roll damage again. Uh, ten damage to you, Abram. So my toughness is six. 
Uh, yes. So, so that is a hit with a raise. You would be shaken and wounded again as he brings his cane back and drives it up into your abdomen, trying to force you back and drive the air out of your lungs. Okay, uh, well, I will, I'll soak it. Okay. With my, with my final fate chip. With your final fate chip, give me a vigor roll. Uh, so uh, for Holy War Warrior, do I need to add it before or after? Uh, I try you need to, to add it before. So if you want to spend some power points to bump up your soak roll, now is the time to do it, Holy Warrior. Uh, okay, I uh, I will just spend. I'll spend three Not power too points. Long in the midnight sea. I'll spend three power points so I can just basically like automatically succeed. Well, I mean, unless you crit fail. You're right. Okay. Don't do that. I'll spend three power points. So the power of God flows through Abram and he just believes hard that he's not hurt. <laughs> <laughs> As Evanor lights up in response, uh -huh. make your vigor roll to soak. And I didn't need it. I got a four. No, you got a seven. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, you soak the wound from, from Kevin, jumping back just in time as the tip of his cane just grazes against your stomach. Mm. A blow that was meant to crush your diaphragm. You are frustrating! But you notice he's not joining in to press his advantage. He doesn't seem to want to move outside of the firelight. Maybe you're not sure. Uh, that is Kevin's turn. Next up, you, Duncan, <laughs> uh... take it away. <laughs> All right, fireball. I just drop it. No, I can't do that. Wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Duncan's gonna go old school, and he sees that Abram is being pressed with Kevin right now, and he's gonna unsling his club, and he's gonna go, you lay off him! And he's just gonna try and smash into You're gonna him. run up and smash Kevin? Yeah, yeah. So you go running up oh, towards oh, Kevin oh, as oh, Kevin oh, is yeah. parrying and, and, and fighting off Abram. And just as you get close with your club, you see Kevin's eyes cut to the side and clock you as he turns and spins underneath Evanor and lashes out with a first strike. Ah. And he aced it on oh, the wild. Come on. Uh, uh, that is a 10. What is your parry? Uh, my parry is a five. So that is going to be a hit with a raise against you, Duncan. So I'll be rolling an extra d6 to Kevin's damage here. But you're lucky. Wow. That's really terrible That's damage. Very low. But I'm lucky because in no. Suede, you no. can reroll damage Come rolls on. with fake chips, <laughs> which I will now do. Woo. Uh, still not great. That's an eight. I think, I think Kevin can do better. I'm going to burn his last fake chip. This is <laughs> important. For some reason, he feels like Duncan is a threat. That's still an eight. He doesn't want to hurt him. OK, one of mine, and then that's it. Last one. You, I don't like Duncan. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, that is 11, aced on the D4, a 14. What is your toughness? My toughness is 18. That's probably not true. No, it's not. I got a five. A five. Okay, so that is a success with two raises. Yeah. So you would be shaken and take two wounds unless you soak this, Duncan. Okay. I can do that. Can you, though? Yeah, it's a vigor roll. Do it. Do a vigor roll. But I have a Do minus a one to vigor rolls. Okay, because you're elderly. Because I'm old. Yeah. That's a four. That's a four. So that would soak one of the wounds. You would still be shaken and wounded, though. I'm. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to keep that. Okay. So as you run up, trying to club the little man, he moves like a snake and just lashes out and just cracks right into your sternum, and you oh, stagger back under the blow. He's fast. You are shaken and wounded, and that will interrupt your attack. I'm sorry, Duncan. Hand in your card. Oh, that's fine. Next up, Willemé. You take out all the birds, leaving one target remaining. The thing that you hate most in the world, apparently. <laughs> little, little men. <laughs> <laughs> because they remind you of the children. It's a very complicated thing running an orphanage. <laughs> All right, so, uh... I, clearly you haven't read Little Women yet. <laughs> it's a whole other area to open up to you. And, and another book after uh, that. Which... So, Clear Path or Mouth? Clear Path, no. Uh, there is still uh, Abram who is engaged in combat with him. So, if you hit Kevin with the defraculator, How you can far away all but guarantee that you'll hit Abram. However, I will let you make a shooting roll at a minus three. 
because sometimes you've got to do odd numbers. Mm. <laughs> and if you succeed on that, you will not hit April. I got three chips, why not? You're getting pretty good at this defraculator. <laughs> You've got the range figured out. You're almost all like 78% right. sure that you can do so, this. So, goodbye all my chips. So that is a six mm. minus three, which is a three. You almost got it. Ooh. If you had like a blue fate chip that you could spend to add a d6 to that, all you would need to roll is a one. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a four example. I'll take that, thank you. Uh, d6? D6, add a d6 to it. Oh, I got two. You got a yeah. two, oh, oh, which is that. one more than you needed. Oh. So as the defraculator <laughs> spins up again, unfortunately, after your two large shots, you only have one small shot left before you're gonna have to reload this with another chunk of ghost rock. So no pumping this one up. Right. Just a normal attack here. Normal Give me attack. a 2d6 roll. All right. Six, do you wanna keep it or do you wanna roll for higher? Reach up. So, <laughs> blue chip, white chip, bay chip. chip. Which one? Which one? Blue or white? White, 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 white. 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 Okay. white. Wait, white to roll, re-roll the damage or d6? To add. To add to the damage. I say re-roll, but whatever. Re-roll. We'll okay, re-roll re yeah. it is. Save your blue chip for something really important. Yeah. See? All right, yeah, you That's 11. It. Okay. Woo! There you go. That's 14. Yeah. 14. Yay yeah, me. Okay. I did good. So the little man is fast and he is strong, but he is not super tough. Uh, so a 14, uh, that is a hit with a raise, with a raise. That is a hit with two raises. Yeah. And he does not have any fate chips to soak with because yeah. I spent them all. Yes. So he is going to be shaken and take two wounds as you defraculate him from behind which is not the nicest way to defraculate someone, <laughs> but desperate times call for desperate measures. I don't and like he... little men! <laughs> yeah, kill Kevin. <laughs> Black Elk? And Kevin Wainwright <laughs> is driven to his knees as Black Elk speaks from beyond the void. <laughs> um, giving Abram the opening he needs in this fight. Well done, Willa May. Uh, Abram, you are up. Kevin has been shaken and wounded oh. by the defraculation that he did not expect. Can I say, try and like yell out to him, try and pull him further away from Lorraine and the fire. I, I think I probably am not, like I think I'm probably just gonna run and attack him even if like that's probably good okay. advice and I think is yes. what we need to do. Uh, but your blood's up, Abram. <laughs> yeah, you know, I gotta hit him while I can. You are so, vengeful yeah. against the fourth ring that's, specifically. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Make All right. him smaller. So <laughs> I, I, will, I will run at him. <laughs> I'll raise Evanor over my head and try and bring it down on him and uh, raise it up and say, this world will be better without you in it and try and... Uh, I agree. Try and finish him <laughs> off. And as you say that, Evanor gr glows brightly with a blue sheen. All right, give me your fighting roll. Okay. Oh, you can make it glow too. Don't go bad. <laughs> oh, yes. <missed> it. <laughs> seven. Seven. I don't think that hits. Would you like to keep it? <laughs> I, 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 I will have... remind you that earlier an eight was not enough. You don't have any, I don't fate, have chips? any fate chips. That was a cool thing to say, though. <laughs> <laughs> How about one fate? Chip? Yay! Let's Yay! give it a try. Get an alleged chip! No! Oh, I'm convinced it's okay. not alleged chip. It's definitely in there. And now Everyone here it is back. says that. <laughs> um, yeah. Still not enough. All right. Mm. So you, you don't got any fate chips to give me, do you? Are you going to come and bond him? Yeah. Yay! Woo! <laughs> All right. Got it. That was actually kind of cool. <laughs> I'm going to use this red fate chip to add a d6 to my seven. Can I do that? Is yes. that all right? Yes. But I get to draw a fate chip. Yep, that's fair. As that is the tradition. That's yeah. how it works. All right, so you had a seven. I had a Roll seven. an extra d6. Yes! yes! You okay, aced it. <laughs> okay. There you go. There so you go. that was, uh, that that was a seven, a six, and a five. Is. So yeah, if you uh, when you add them all up, that's an 18. <laughs> no, I mean, yes, like, sure it sure is. Uses, um, so as you okay. bring Evanor down, you see Kevin from his knees Look up suddenly at you, a mischievous glint in his eye as he brings the cane up to block with, again, the speed that you have come to expect from him, and that's what's important. You've come to expect it, which is why instead of going down with Evanor, you slash in from the side, missing the cane and striking him directly yes. with a raise. So, he is a supernaturally evil living creature. 
So you are going to roll your full damage with Evanor and potentially be able to heal if you have any wounds. Ooh. Well, I don't have any wounds, but I oh. would be able to heal. That's what you do with a magic sword. All right, so give it, give it a damage roll. Didn't okay. I tell you to slice? From so, the, I did the whole slicing thing. You did. That was the common bond. That was the common bond. <laughs> uh, okay, so I roll strength plus d8 plus d6 plus d6. Correct. That's oh my a very God. large roll. That's three d6 and a uh, and a and a d6. That's basically like right. shooting and a, a sword out of a shotgun. Three d6 and a d8. All right. Jeez. Oh, well, good. Oh. Uh, one, well, two, you raised three, it. Three, four, five, six, twelve. 12, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 damage is enough to put an end yeah! to Kevin Wainwright. Yes! Yeah! As you slice down, you he goes up to block and Evanor shines brightly as you slash into his side and embed the sword in the, in the little man's side and he looks up shocked and sort of reaches out to the darkness above and says, Master? <laughs> and then falls lifeless to the ground. We did not forget yeah. Kevin. Yeah, hand right. in your card. Uh. Oh, but what's this? Oh, you were acting on a 10, and Lorena had a jack. Oh. While you were doing that with Kevin, as the rest of you watch, hmm. monstrous wings sprout from underneath Lorena's dress, and her body starts to become covered in feathers, black, oily, greasy feathers. And as she starts to stand up, her body jerking strangely, you see that she's transforming into some sort of strange half bird, half woman monster. No! I need a guts roll from everybody. Ah, but I did guts so much damage skill. to her. There, there it is. Right. Can you add your uh, Does Brave affect guts Where's rolls? Grit? Yes. Oh okay. my god, my eyes. Uh, Grit is, where's Grit on this sheet? Oh, Grit is not, yes, you made it, you made it. Grit okay. is not on this sheet, yeah. but yes. You have, uh, <laughs> Paste it. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I got a nine. Nine, okay. Seven. Seven? Twelve. All right, you've all seen bird women before. <laughs> so <laughs> as she, yeah, because it would have been with these. As she starts to stand up, yeah. and her monstrous form <laughs> is revealed, she starts to flap those wings and take up into the sky, however, she still does not seem to be at her best, Valeria. Good. Whatever you did to her earlier has her on her absolute last legs. Good. Now, Valeria, it is your turn. Oh. It's like a Mike Myers thing. You should have double Well, it. <laughs> I, want to, I want to soul blast her again. It worked so well before, I'm just going to do the same thing again and just aim right for her face. Okay. Is that a call <laughs> shot to her head? No, no. Okay. Her face. I just wanted to be clear. I'm just thinking it. Her face, not her head. You're right. That's easier. All right, go for it. You're going to do a, a, a large soul blast. Yes. One big hit. Oh. I, ro I rolled a one on my uh, spellcasting die. Well, that's not good. No, it's not. So let's re-roll it. Okay. Spending a white fate ship to re-roll. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's better. I got a uh, six. That is a success. So roll 3d6 damage. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I aced yes. one one. So eight, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16. 16, 16 damage. 16 damage. Hey. I bet you didn't know that Lorena Corbett could turn into a giant half bird, half human person. She could even do cool things like that. What kind of cool things? We'll never know. Because Valeria Batten just destroyed her with a giant yeah. green soul blast as she was taking to the sky, knocking her out of the sky and down to the earth below, motionless as a hush falls over the now uh, littered with feathers campsite <laughs> that you found. Well, uh, don't let any raccoons steal those, though. I mean, <laughs> we have a campsite now. Oh, sure. <laughs> on, on the plus side. As you guys sta stand around recovering, Stoker comes stumbling out of the darkness. I, I apologize, did, did, I, did I miss anything? Yes, you missed everything. I, I'm terribly sorry, I, I felt a great surge of some, something dark. Whoa. And, and I was momentarily overcome. It seems to be getting worse, Abram. Well, 
and we've got to keep moving. That seems to be part of the problem, but I think you might be right. It just seems the further we go this direction, the harder it becomes to keep myself in check. We're here to, to help. All yeah, right. or put you down if we need to. No. Ooh. No need for that yet, <laughs> Miss Battle. I'm just saying, I don't want to die because so something saying. happens to you. Valeria, have some tact. I don't have tact. All right, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's that delightful exchange occurs. Uh, everyone give me a notice roll. <laughs> Ten. Ten. Three. Three. Uh, six. I don't notice. Six. Six. Is that with your plus Yeah, two? that's with the plus two. Okay. Because you're keeping a careful, watchful eye on those children. <laughs> twelve. Twelve? Yeah. All right, so you got a ten. You got a twelve. Um, both of you, uh, both Abram and Professor Duncan, you hear a sort of distant moan carried by the wind. It sounds like a groan of someone in pain, just off from the darkness, far away from the campfire. <laughs> Got that thing where you feel like something's coming? Sounds like, sounds like someone maybe needs help. Maybe more of these monsters were out there and, and these could be some of their victims. Or uh, it's a trap. Yeah. Well, I'm we at gonna... least have to check. Do we? Nah, I'm not gonna. Fine, then you all stay here. <laughs> Evanor will light my way. All right. Yeah, I was gonna ask how you were gonna see out in the darkness. Will and May, you're gonna you're gonna stay here. Um. I mean, are they staying? Uh, I'm going with him because I heard it. Uh, I'll probably go, even though I don't think it's. it's All right. Uh, I'm important. gonna go, but I'm gonna fall back. All right. You're gonna stay back behind. Yeah. Now might but be a within, good time. But within the light, obviously. Sure. Sure. <laughs> now might be a good time to reload the defraculator yeah, with a new road. chunk of ghost yeah, rock. Gonna... You pretty much tapped that one out. Because like, you know, that's I'd like a to try hint, to heal hint. myself. <laughs> you want to try and heal yourself? Yeah. Go for it, Duncan. Okay. Don't forget to factor your wound. Into yep. This. Uh, I can heal you. No, let Duncan do this. He's trying to learn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Said Black Elk. <laughs> Aced it. Ooh. Good job! Uh, eight minus one is a seven. A seven? That's a success, Duncan. Yeah. <laughs> I did yeah. it! <laughs> you did it. It's a one. Uh, it's a white uh, one. <laughs> so Duncan, you, you kind of stay back by the by the fire with uh, with Willa May and 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 chant and focus and and all of a sudden, to your surprise, you feel your wounds start to knit closed. This is the first time that's actually happened. I did it! <laughs> Don't, can you not yell that so loud right now? Did it. <laughs> Great job. Now, let's do be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and you two sneak off into the dark. Yeah. Evanor held aloft to light your way. You climb up a small ridge, and then looking out over, once you get to the top, you see what look like the remains of a large encampment. But clearly, as the cloud move away from the moon and light it up, you see something terrible happened here not too long ago. There are dead bodies littering this area. What looks like collapsed tents, cold campfires, and, and the, the dead just all over this field. But off in the distance, just barely, you hear that moan again and you see what looks like the barest bit of movement. I think there might be a survivor. I'm going after it. Are you sure this isn't a trap? Is it's, it worth it? Is this what we're here for? If there's a chance that we could save whatever that is, we have to take it. All right. So as you walk across the field, you start to see what looks like some of these people are wearing garish, loud, brightly colored clothing. They look like circus folk to you, Valeria. And from Evanor's light, as you walk through the field, you see the faces of some of the fourth ring members that you once worked so closely with. Evanor's light reveals the dead face of Micah Rise, of Quimby Tuttlemeyer, of Arnold McCaddish, Jayameen, and one of the flying Papaskews. It seems like whatever battle took place here, the fourth ring did not escape without casualties. But as you move further, 
Abram, you start to see men dressed in black, lying face down all over the field. Many more of them than there are fallen fourth ring members. It looks like the agency chose to tussle with the circus and didn't make it out completely unscathed. And you hear a, hello, off from the side. Yes. W where are you? Here. Just to your left. All right, just stay there. Do you walk over? I do. Valeria, are you with them? Yes. And you guys are kind of like up on the rise. You can see the battlefield and see them walking over there. The light illuminates the face of Byron Decker, the agent who was with you in Denver, Valeria. Oh. He appears to be just barely clinging to life. Who, who are you? I, I can't just, just, see. Just stay silent. Oh, I'm here to help. It's Decker. I want to... I know that voice. It's Valeria. Batten. And who's with you? Ugh, Abram Groth. Listen. Listen. I don't have much time. Tombstone. For some reason, it's all focused on Tombstone. The, the Earps have fallen. Bayou Vermilion is making a play for the town. The fourth ring, Bayou Vermilion, and maybe even the Cackler himself are holed up at the place of power, a site of a great haunt, the Birdcage Theater, which you can visit here in Tombstone if you're here, <laughs> or should you ever want to come. <laughs> I hear they give late night ghost tours. Yes. You have to make it there. You have to stop whatever machinations they have in play, please. You have to finish what the agency couldn't. And as you prepare to whisper a prayer to the Lord above to send his healing light to this agent, he breathes his last rattling breath and falls dead in front of you. I was too late. I shouldn't, let him, I shouldn't have let him expose it. <laughs> well, <laughs> you Isn't know, that always the way? You can't always control that. It's what he wanted. But it sounds like we need to get to Tombstone as soon as possible. Oh. Yeah. We are so hydrated. Thank you. Thank you very much to Jody Black for Yay. hydrating. Jody Black, yay! Um, do, the, do the rest of you follow down now that it seems that they're in no immediate danger? Yes. I think he's done expositing. <laughs> so you make your way down to the group, standing around the fallen body of your previous companion, Valeria. What do you want to do? Where are we? I assume we're close to Tombstone. Oh, you're asking me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Which direction then? Do you want to consult the spirits? Yep. <laughs> Give me a tribal medicine roll, Duncan. <laughs> That's a four. A four? Yep. All right, so you start to appeal to the spirits, but the darkness and the pain and the recent tragedy of this battlefield silences their voices. There is nothing here but a heavy, cloying, clinging darkness. There's too much here. I, 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 I can't focus on the spirits when there's this much death around. We, we, we have to get out of here. Abram, you've spent a little time with Austin Stoker and you know very few people know the South as well as this man does. Stoker, do you think you could find your way through here? Even just somewhere that we can Find a town that can lead us to Tombstone. Perhaps. I might be able to uh, spread out and get a lay of the land. Although, uh, it might be difficult to, to travel here. Well, what makes you think that, that I would know this place any better than you, Groth? He says, wearing his Confederate uh, <laughs> soldier's uniform. I mean, you're the man who knows the South better than anyone else I've ever seen. Well, what makes you say that? You're a stoker. Do you say anything about him being a Confederate? You're a Confederate. Well, true, <laughs> but times have changed. Uh, and, I mean, it's dangerous to say things like that, Growth. After all, the Confederacy fell 
almost 15 years ago. Is this something I know? And as he says that, all of you have a moment in your heads where you go, wait, that's not true. The Confederate States have been a, 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 a force in, in, on the continent for quite some time now. But as you're thinking that, his words find their way into your head. And suddenly, you find yourselves questioning that. You have two memories at the same time. One of the Confederate States and the Civil War dragging on long past the time that it should have ended, and another where the Confederacy fell. And all of a sudden, these memories seem to be butting up against each other and battling for dominion, leaving you a little bit lost and a little bit confused. I, all, the, all the same, I, I think I recognize this terrain. I think there might be a, a rail line that that runs perhaps over that ridge. Maybe if we follow that, we can find our way to a, a depot and right. board a train. Maybe somewhere we can rest for a moment. Obviously, we have to get to Tombstone quickly, but I, I feel strange. At this point, Willem May, you have decided that you have seen as much as you need to see here. It's time to report back to the Rangers. Your job is not to continue on to Tombstone. Your job is to do what the Rangers have hired you to do, whatever that may be. So perhaps after you find a depot, it might be time for you to go your separate ways, Willem May. You do indeed find a rail line over that ridge. You do follow it to a depot, and you are able to book passage to wherever it is you need to go. Willem May, you go one way. The rest of you book passage to Tombstone. During the night, as you sleep on the car, Valeria, you toss and turn fitfully and you feel whatever that broken spot in your brain that you felt when the bird swirled over you split open and spill out into your dreams. You see visions of Gomorrah and the darkness boiling up beneath it. You, you see Ivor Hawley and his laughing true face, and you remember what it was that he was trying to turn the town of Gomorrah into. And you see a greater darkness spreading across the land from everywhere, blowing like a foul wind that changes things as it goes, rewriting the rules, changing all the things that you once thought you knew so solidly, and you see that darkness begin to swirl and coalesce over the town of Tombstone. And you know with certainty that whatever once tried to turn Gomorrah into a hell on earth, has shifted its attention elsewhere. Something great, something powerful, and something very evil will soon scar the town of Tombstone. And as you start awake from your nightmare, you realize the train has stopped. And you look out the window to see that you have arrived to your destination mm. in Arizona. Tombstone lies outside, the town too tough to die. Or is it? And that is where we will conclude things in the final act of the Twilight Protocol. Thank you guys very much for Thank playing. You. Thank you Thank guys you. for being here and watching. Thank you at home for watching this in the future. And yes. again, thank you very much to Pine Box Entertainment and to Pinnacle for having us come out and be a part of this. It has yes. been our pleasure to contribute to the fiction of Doomtown. Oh wait, hey. a wild David Lapp appears. <laughs> Hold on, speak into this. So. To follow the conclusion of the event tomorrow, uh, which by the time you watch this will have concluded, we will have the top eight, and those players are deciding the end of this fiction. So if an evil player has won, then all of the events, everything that happened with this posse will have been for nothing. But if good has won, then this posse has prevailed. Oh. So we'll be rooting for the side of good, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, so, so if the bad wind is Doomtown End. <laughs> yep. That is, that is confirmation. <laughs> if the evil side wins, and we're, we're setting up shop. We're, we're closing up the doors, shuttering everything. <laughs> no, thank you very much. Thank you to you guys. Good luck to all of the Doomtown players. Yeah. Who will be deciding the fate of this, of this story. 
and thank you again for having us here. This yeah. has been a blast. La, 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 la. If you ever wanted to go to Tombstone, Arizona, you absolutely should. Yeah. It is so much fun. <laughs> uh, so thank you again to the city of Tombstone for having us. Thank you guys, and we will leave you with some finger guns. Oh, yeah. a pew, 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 pew.